Happening, everybody, and welcome back to the True Gamer Podcast, a podcast hosted by two gamers for you, the True Gamers. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie, along with my bro, the inverted gamer himself, Sheps. How's it going, bro? Uh, it do be going good. Is it be yeah. going really good? Or it's, going, it's going pretty good. We've got a lot of stuff, not all gaming related, like One Division. I'm just loving. Oh yeah, it's it's getting so great, right? It's getting didn't really expect good. it to be. We were like, oh, it's going to be a TV yeah. show. It's not. Uh, yeah, yeah. tamper expectations, people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then also, like even better than One Division is Streamcast over on the FPN, our flagship show, which um, both is really fun to make, but is also doing absolute bits, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is really good and. Yes, yeah, so it's going good, man. It's going yeah, good. it's going good. If you're new around here, which I know we do have a, a quite a few new subscribers yes, recently yeah, and whatnot, yeah. you guys should check out all of our stuff, including the stuff over on the Four Pillars Network. Links will be in the description to that. And uh, yeah, there's all kinds of cool, cool things happening over there, and including yeah. obviously our great show. Our great content, exactly. but obviously it's a, a gaming This podcast. is a gaming podcast right. where we're going to be talking about all kinds of gaming. And bro, let me just warn you and everyone out there. Okay. This is going to be a very PlayStation-centric show. We're us talking about PlayStation? Just as I said it, I, I, I was thinking of Dan. He's probably going to be like, you guys never. <laughs> no. no. Gasp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of PlayStation news that came out. It's almost as if PlayStation were like... Two games coming up in a couple of days, right? We should, we should, we should probably release right. all of our all of our news now. So there's going to be a lot of PlayStation talk, yeah. a lot of gaming talk in general. Uh, buckle up, bros, for yeah. some good stuff. Right. Just here. before we get into it, we're actually no joke the number one source of PlayStation news. Like the last uh, year, when all those leaks came out, we got the leaks early. Mm-hmm. We said uh pre- presented the information said our ideas mm-hmm. and then a year later every single thing turned out to be true including our predictions we were 100 percent accurate you're welcome you're welcome guys. that's why you subscribe this is the place that people like the big people like daniel Lamard and everything like that come right. to us and they're like what's those what's this combo yeah. guys saying and then he puts it on twitter pretending to be his right, own right. stuff you got any of those hot takes man <laughs> Yeah, David Chappelle just like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anymore, anymore. Exactly. Anyway, you guys should subscribe for more awesome stuff like that and other cool things. That's right. But before we get into it, um, our content across both of our channels and also the FPN is made possible by the incredible Super Bros over on patreon.com forward slash conversations who do we have to thank we have diogo dildo isak the ultimate cum sock carol to rivia aka cats but the friendly patron record friction dan the man jeremy runner that's right an official avenger martin scorsese's master h barts 12 the midget aloy from smallville sabine the former freeloader christian master chief himself albiscori the eddie clone super sus ben fryer the star wars ins- and the star wars encyclopedia adam sunling i was gonna say if right, I right. say that last one without the and, it just seems like an incomplete sentence. It's... Thank you, bro, so much for keeping the lights and mics on and the gaming going here at Combro Plations. Your legends. Right. You do. We do really love you. The only problem with, with Combro Plations and that intro is the list shifts. People go up and down tiers pretty often. That's the way it works. <laughs> and so we get into a really good rhythm. We know the line, yeah. We know all the names. And then like one changes or one gets added or yeah. two people join, which happens sometimes. And you're like... Well, Wait, <laughs> where do they go? The one that gets you me is Tetris like, in names. if the last person disappears, what, ha- what happens now is what happens. Right. I'm like, oh, there's clearly another name yeah, after this. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, 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 there isn't, there isn't. Right. Anyway, thank you guys so much for supporting us over there. It means the world to us and you guys literally keep us keep us going and keeping the show going, stuff like that. So, bro, yes. um, today normally, what we normally do on the True Game Podcast, we talk about gaming, we talk about what we've been playing recently. Right, right, right. But this podcast is jam-packed and we've got a lot of things to talk talk about so i'm actually gonna skip right past that okay and i'm gonna jump us into one of our first topics yeah, let's do here. it um we it's all gonna be about god of war uh god of war ragnarok mm. i've asked people for predictions and things like right. that um how are you feeling about god of war in general just the surface level at the moment um i mean there hasn't been that much out to be fair i was gonna but... say the thing is is like i feel better about it than say elden ring we've we've got literally the same amount of stuff <laughs> Actually, we have less for God of War Ragnarok, but we have God of War, yeah. or God of War 4, however you want to look at it, and that was so incredible. 
arguably the best game ever made, the mm. best game story ever told sort of thing, that I'm actually really quite excited for it. I'm excited to find out what we get to know. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I know I'm going to like the game. I'm pretty set. So after God of War, because I replayed it recently, yes, like everyone did. knows and whatnot, um, I kind of went mad in thinking about theories and stuff like that. Hence the reason why I wrote out to the bros and I said, bros, right. you guys, writing with your theories, writing with what you're thinking and stuff like that, because I want to talk all about okay. it. And there's a ton of, like, questions I want to ask you and see how you feel about them to see if it... If I'm being crazy or if it's... If it's I, I definitely want to hear that because I remember in, like, maybe 2019, we were all maybe early 2020 we were talking about what would a potential new game look like mm -hmm. and i was saying that to maintain the because the most important thing in that game is kratos and atreus and their relationship right yeah by far that's the only thing that really matters anything else you can you can make it work mm -hmm. and like that's the most important thing for them to maintain so what's the next story right like yeah are we staying in the viking north place are they fleeing um, from Thor, because you know Thor turns up at the end. Yeah, because he just killed his two kids. Alert. Whoa, I'm so sorry. You just spoiled the wow. whole game. No point in playing it, guys. Close. Right. Turn off the PS5. Don't no, like. I think it could be quite interesting as a game mechanic where Kratos is like, "Look, I can't have you in danger. We got to go somewhere else. This guy's whole mission in life is to kill all the ice giants or whatever." Mm -hmm. um, and then so you go to like ancient Egypt, and there's still gods there, and you kind of kill your way through that because they're. Uh, beefing you out but yeah. in the meantime the reason they're beefing you out is because you brought Thor right Thor's following you and you're fleeing and you're having to kill your way through other gods who are angry that Thor's killing his way through them you know interesting interesting like that could be a good way to do it so we okay. get to see other like pantheons of gods this is good because this is actually the conversation I wanted to get into yeah. when we uh, in a second. But before we just get into that, yes. we do have one more special special group of people that I we mean, have to thank before getting into the I show. I feel like this is sort of the deal of like, you know, when people get kidnapped and they record them with the kidnapper's demand. That's how <laughs> yeah. I feel about these guys. Like the Joker in like Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, look at me. <gasps> That's fucking scary. That was very good. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... Our abusers, yes, over on patreon.com forward slash conversations <clears throat> at the five dollar tier, the true gamers mm -hmm. who they wouldn't let us go. No, you know, they were like, If you want freedom, if you ever want to see your PlayStations again, you'll make this true gamer podcast, specifically this podcast. And you'll take our five dollars a month, you'll take our five dollar pledges and above at patreon.com forward slash conversations. And if you don't, we're going to keep cyberbullying you until you make this podcast. And so we did it. We caved to the pressure. We did. And these are the accused, Your Honor. We have, <laughs> Your Honor, I like that. Jeremy Horde, Sab2557, Record Friction, Real Kermit Cinema, Diogo, Deadpool lives in his own space. Okay. Alrighty, alrighty. Cool. Uh, it's better than the weekend podcast he was talking about last time. Uh, Dan, Katz McCorrell, Isak Manny, Doc Nutella, Super Whale Ben, Al Biscori, Poopy, De Scoopy Scoop, DD Poop. No, fuck that one up. One more try, and if I don't get it, I'm done. Uh, Poopy, De Scoop Scoop, DD Whoop Whoop, D Scoop, D Poop. Oh, no. Got it. It right first time. There. First try, guys. Just edit out. I there. feel like I'll that one's easier than the swamp. Swan one. A lot easier. Yeah. The swan one, I, I was saying swan and stuff like yes, that. Yes, you were. That was bad. So weird. Hooded dude, Benedict Clobbers, Batfire, Batfan527. I was going to go straight to the five. Uh, Christian0210, Max H. Fishy, Oscar Morgan, Cobra SS, Jack Nicholas, and Joe McCormack. Brand new patron. Thank you, bro, so much for keeping the gaming going here and supporting us over at Combo yes, Relations. Indeed. You guys are all great. Cool, guys. So. Yeah. God of War Ragnarok. Let me, just don't even enter it. Let me hear theories. I've had a couple of theories. Yeah. So we know at the end, spoiler alert, of God of War 2018. Can we just say I'm actually really nervous because all through WandaVision, you had the dumbest fucking theories. <laughs> and I was so like, I was like, no, nah, so stupid. And like 90% of them turned out to be like, <laughs> if not right, but like closer than I was. Yeah. Which really bugs me, because we're friends. But also, I'm really worried that you're going to say some dumb stuff now. And you're going to be like, nah, no, no, I don't want then, that. I don't then, want that. And then they're going to do it, and it will also be good. Because WandaVision was great as well. I was like, these are, these are, these are stupid, and then they do it. I'm like, that's actually pretty good. Shit, they actually nailed that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm a little nervous to hear what, you want, what you're thinking. In the end of... 
God of War 2018. Yeah. We, spoiler alert, you can tune out now yeah. if you want to. I don't know why you would, though, because the title of this video is God of War Ragnarok Theories or whatever. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, you see the the mural on the wall yeah. after Atreus touches it and yeah. it starts to break apart and it shows their story where the, the, the frost giants are like loosely sort of predicted what they did up until the, all yeah, on that yeah. journey. And there's one more pain at the end mm -hmm. and it's almost a prediction of the future. And it almost shows what we interpret to be Kratos giving his life or losing his life in the arms of Atreus. Is that right? If you look it up at uh, yeah, yeah. end panel or something like that for God of War, you'll see what I mean. It's essentially him on the ground and there's something coming out of his mouth and there's something coming out of Atreus' mouth. It looks like he's about to die in Atreus' hands. I mean, so you know that there's like a time paradox thing going on here. You yeah. know, the big snake. Yeah. That's the thing that comes out of Atreus' mouth. It, that's why it knows Atreus. Oh, okay. And that's what we see in the painting. Right. There is some, whatever it is, I'm not up on Norse mythology, but there is a, it, Atreus uh, births this snake thing into it. I don't know if it kills him or, or what. Mm. I don't know. Um, but that's why the snake, you know, the first time you speak to it on the boat, and, and that's also why he can understand it. Yeah. And he's like, I know you. Like, you're you're really, I know you from a long time ago, but Atreus is like 11. Yeah. How could he have known him? Right. Well, anyway, there's that last pain, and it looks like it looks like uh, Kratos is dying in the arms of Atreus. There. Okay. So, and it wouldn't be too it wouldn't be too outlandish to think in one of the God of War games, whether or not this turns out to be only two games, or whether it turns out to be yeah. a trilogy, that Kratos dies in the end. It yeah. could be a very nice, satisfying ending to like the whole trilogy and whatnot. Yeah. However, I don't think he can. If they are going to go to for a trilogy, I don't think he can die in the second one because. It, like The Last of Us is The Last of Us. It's not Joel. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're playing, in this, you're playing as the God of War. Right. You can't have God of War and then he's dead in the second one and you, you never see him in the third mm -hmm. one or something like that. I have a theory that perhaps a bit like what you said about the different realms and the gods and stuff like that, I have a theory that they have to go to all those other gods in order to find out some sort of weakness for Thor because mm -hmm. Thor's going to be the big bad guy but in the end he's actually not the big bad guy that's actually Odin yeah, I mean Odin makes sense he's the Zeus of the yeah pantheon, right? and I mean like while Thor is big and bad and stuff like that I get the feeling that Odin is actually the really bad guy the one that's pulling all the strings and is really you know how gods are where they're like they really up themselves and they think they're better yeah, than yeah. everyone. While Thor does think that as well and even his children and things like yeah. that. Uh, I think Odin is the one that we fight. I haven't quite decided on whether or not it will be a trilogy or whether or not it would be two games. Uh, there's a difference, isn't there? Where it's like they made God of War and it was very clear they had ideas for a number two. Yeah, yeah, obviously. And they set it up in that. There's there's a difference between making two games and then going, actually, we could make a third in here if we make this story wrap round again, yeah. but there was no ends that would needed to be tied up. I hope they go for two. And okay. if they can somehow make our three out of it, that'll be great. But I don't want them to be like, okay, uh, we beat Thor, but actually Odin's in the background. Then it goes, dum -dum, cut fades to black. And yeah. we're like, oh, come on, man. That's not what we needed. I think the way I would do it is actually I would make it a trilogy. I would do it where, like, game two, you flee to another area. Hmm. So we get new design and stuff. We can go through, like, Ra and all those uh, Anubis and that. Yeah. The other thing is here, and I'm looking at this picture of, of Atreus. He's still kid Atreus. So we can't have, like, this weird, this huge maturing time gap where he becomes, like, a teenager or a young man. In the mural, isn't mm. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would probably do, you fl you're fleeing from Thor. And you go across one or two places. So like yeah. ancient Egypt makes sense. Maybe like India. Mm. So you can like have like Ganesh and um and people like that. Or maybe Japan. There's lots of old like Oni type deity yeah. things. That would be cool. And the, the at the end you fight um Thor, or you have to return for some reason because of Atreus to like the thing, and that's where you fight Thor. And at the mm. end of two is where you realize it wasn't just Thor. Like Odin had a thing and now you killed like his favorite son or whatever. Mm. And then three is where you wrap up everything here, Atreus growing and whatever. 
also I'm looking at this thing and while it looks like Kratos maybe is dying I wouldn't be surprised if Kratos is dying and then Atreus needing to bring back his dad causes this snake to be born and that's what saves Kratos. Interesting, interesting. Like maybe it's got some magic to yeah, it. Yeah, we or, don't know. Yeah, who, right? who knows? Who it's knows magic, right? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> but I could see it where it's like it, it, you could interpret that mural as Kratos, Kratos is dying in Atreus' arms and to save him uh, he causes the snake to be born which maybe that then later goes on to save them or protect them yeah. from the thing like maybe that snake goes on to fight in fact I think that snake does fight Thor that's Thor's big bad I believe you think so? I think oh, so. Oh no! Wait, yeah, they they do say in the story that the um them two have a fight. Yeah, they don't. Neither of them win, and uh, the world serpent does really hate Thor because yeah. of the fight that they've had. And if there is like a time paradox, like you said, where like it could really hate Thor because it thinks it's trying to kill his dad. Something I'm not sure. You yeah. know. So I mean, I, it it could be really interesting. I, I think maybe three games is the way to go, unless they're going to make it. I think it's a really bad idea to make it two games and end with, oh, but maybe Odin's the thing, knowing that we're not going to get a third game. Like, I want a nice, clean yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. I want it to be like, uh, Kratos has done all this stuff in his life, finally got to a point where he has a family that he's not... Because that's one of the things about God of War 4, where the reason you know, he won't doesn't want to like a touch Atreus is like, he's had families before. He He's a force of destruction. Anything he touches breaks or dies or is killed. yeah. And that's why he doesn't want to get close to Atreus. That's why he doesn't want to touch him. Um, and that's the big conflict. And mm. he gets over it, right? So finally is at this point where he trusts himself enough to love Atreus. Yeah. And like, I think it's a good way to end with like he he's out of the picture because he's like one of the ultimate forces of destruction in the universe. Mm. Um, and as a result, he brings into being, um, you know, Atreus and this serpent and stuff. I think that would be a nice clean ending because as much as Atreus is cool, I'm in it for Kratos. Yeah. This is the Kratos story, not the Atreus story. That that the emotions that he portrays without saying anything is very, very powerful yeah. and very, very cool. That's what you wanna see when you're in this. I'm sure I, I do trust the guys at Sony Santa Monica. I do trust Kratos. They make um, some great stuff. I was gonna say the track record's really good. Yeah, so um, was Cyberpunk. Yeah, let's not let's I mean uh, CDPRs. I didn't want to mention that, but that's very true right there. That's very I feel though that um, not to be full Sony ponies, yeah. but generally speaking, the Sony studios don't go bang a bang a bang. Oh, by the way, we're doing a Bioware, we're doing a Bethesda, <laughs> yeah. right? They tend to. They've to, got a good formula. Like maybe they dip, they... like or well, maybe you just don't like the game. But yeah. it's never like The Witcher Three Cyberpunk, you know. I was going to say, they have had some cancelled projects before, even at Sony Santa Monica yeah. Studios where they cancelled that sci-fi shooter yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So maybe the vetting process in Sony is yeah. just, they're like, mm, we don't want to take a chance on that because that looks a bit too far, yeah. bit too far different and something we don't think we could properly market. Yeah, maybe. But then again, they take big strides and they go outside the box every now and again where they're, they're like... Sucker Punch make a Japanese... I was just about sub- to say, yeah. I was going to say, Sucker Punch, yeah, what are you guys good for? Now you're making a Japanese like, game. Open world, super powered, uh, like GTA run around, fight the cops, fight the gangs kind of thing. And you want to make us, oh, you want to make a, a you you want to make a samurai movie. But it's not a movie, it's a game. You, you play the samurai. Okay, and you're going to... Interesting. F- so you know nothing about that. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, cool. Uh, um, yeah, go for it. Go for it, why not? Do you think that they pull... A naughty dog on us, a Neil Druckmann on us, and kill, kill Kratos straight away. Kratos straight away. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mainly because um, we don't have a relationship with Atreus and Kratos the way we had a relationship with yeah. Joel and Ellie. So we could, you can do that because after Joel's killed, we get all these flashbacks with Joel and Ellie, and it's like the gap in between that we know was there, and we have that relationship with them prior to that. Mm. We don't have that with these guys. So I don't, I don't see how it's possible. If they do a time skip like they did in The Last of Us, and then they do like flashback memories of what happened in between to really set it up, yeah. do you not think so? My main thing is that I don't think we want to play as Atreus for that long. Yeah. Um, whereas like playing as, as Ellie 
or even playing as Abby isn't bad. I mean, we we have we have creative issues yeah. with with playing as Abby and doing it for as long as we did, and especially how much at that art. point as well, when our hatred was at its highest point for her and stuff right. like that. I probably agreed. I actually would have had you if we were remaking The Last of Us Two. I would have had you like come to terms with the fact that Abby's actually just a human being and it was this that The Last of Us 2 is two revenge stories yeah. right and that she had good reasons to do it and all this stuff um, making you realise that actually killing her is not as simple as killing the person that killed Joel she's killing the person that killed her dad you know all this stuff yeah um, but we'd play do we ever play as Atreus much with, in that hunting mission that's about it and it's like not, not even I a hunting wanna, mission it's one point they give you control of the bow and arrow and that's yeah. it <laughs> i want to play as kratos yeah. i want to play as the god of war like super Ares. you know on i want to beat wonder woman it's on the box oh yeah you have to beat right. wonder woman yeah, yeah. i want to throw the leviathan axe and have it come back to me i want to use the chaos blades that's what i want mm. um or maybe i think that the actual player is not to do it as atreus it's to find a third weapon for um, Kratos to round him out yeah I mean I don't know what that weapon could be because these weapons were done so well so I trust well. them if they would say we found the third that we feel like yeah. fits that would be great can't imagine what it could be because like blades are like throwable mm. almost uh, in certain range anyway yeah. they could be pulled back just like the Leviathan next Leviathan next be throwing even further oh, the what else can be? a gun so give Kratos a gun yes, it's just <laughs> Kratos with two AKs <laughs> I, uh, I will say something um, so you know when the DualSense controller came out? Yeah. The thing that they kept on trying to market all the time when they were trying to tell us about the haptic triggers and yeah. stuff like that, the thing they kept saying, they were like, you can feel the 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 drawback on a, on a bow. It's yeah. like you feel the tension in the bow. And all of our minds automatically went to Horizon Zero Dawn because that's the only game that we know that we play like I don't that. care about that game. I went to the Leviathan Act straight away. Well, that thing is you won't be able to... I, I guess you'll be able to feel like knocks the on the thing, but you won't be able to feel tension in something of a leviathan axe it's more like throw and then come yeah. back but that's like rumble right now but when they were talking about the tension they were always like the bows the, yeah, yeah, yeah. like being pulling back then the tension on a bow and we we're like okay the only game that oh we i have see to, what you're saying yeah everybody thought horizon but they meant atreus what could they have that's what i'm thinking i don't think so i don't like so let me just say i'm putting this up as devil's advocate yeah, 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 all these things i'm saying i actually don't like i don't want yeah, to play yeah, yeah. as atreus of the whole thing yeah. i feel that's too much all, i don't want Kratos no, to yeah, die but, straight away oh, of i want to play as Kratos, but, but i'm being devil's advocate for conversation purposes yeah but could they have meant yeah because you're gonna play as atreus at one point that's, or something like that that's like an interesting... You know how sometimes in the book, it's like a Hodor moment. You're like, they knew. Yeah. Oh my God, they planned ahead, right? I think, though, that that works much better for Aloy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It doesn't... Yeah. It, like, no one thinks of Atreus when they think of God of War. They think of Kratos and this great father-son story, but the yes. son's kind of in, you know, pixelated a bit. Yeah, like yeah. Atreus, <laughs> Atreus doesn't really matter, you know, for the story. It matters yeah. that... Do you hear that? Do you hear that? I well, don't remember his name, the, the actor's name, but do you hear that? Yeah, you heard me. That's how... That's how. <laughs> also, here's the worry, right? Here's the worry. Yeah. That voice actor's aged out by now. Probably doesn't sound like a kid anymore. Yeah. So do you think the story is that Thor comes along and gets Atreus and kicks Kratos somewhere else? So maybe that's the thing. He kicks Kratos to his friends in Egypt. Kratos has to kill his way through Egypt to return for the mm. third thing where he, die, where he dies fighting Thor. And that's where... Um, it's Loki, okay? I'm gonna stop saying a trace. <laughs> it's like I didn't. I was, if anybody had like played most of the game but not finished it, God damn like, it! You just ruined everything for them. God, you know, oh. like he, he fights his way back to face Thor and then Odin. Die? No, die. What? I don't know. I don't know what I would do, but like has to kill his way through Egypt or whichever other like cool things we can see other stuff. Yeah. To get his way back to Atreus, to fight and die, and then Loki does the serpent thing, and I think the my grand idea of this yeah. is that in order i think we would play a little bit of, of atreus you must do you have to i feel like it's he's good especially because <clears throat> you know in the the flashback sorry the dream i should say because it was a dream that he had where uh, thor comes along to the door it's not actually yeah. a real thing yeah, 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 yeah. but it does say 10 years later however atreus is still the same size still the same look he doesn't check yeah. aged a single bit kratos i mean how much more could he possibly age the guy's got a wedge beard and he's white yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um he looks exactly the same. It says age 10 years yeah. later. Um, On that note. 
But I do think if it was to be in real life, it wasn't a dream, then I think he would age up 10 years and I think it'd be about, be about the right time. And I think the way that the story would go is that Kratos and, and uh, Atreus are fighting. They may be trying to fight off Thor or something yeah. like that. Uh, also, there's the Freya fight to think about because she left really angry in the last yes, game. Did, so that's yeah. going to be a thing. Um, and maybe Kratos gets kidnapped at some point and then that's when we play as Atreus and then we have to go after Kratos and wherever the hell he's being captive and then we break him out or whatever it might be and yeah. then we go back to Kratos. That might add for a, a period where you play as Atreus and I think not the whole game. It's definitely a good idea to play as Atreus for some point because yeah. we need to be compelled about Atreus. Yeah. That he's a he's someone that we care about so that we can see why Kratos cares about him because Atreus is Kratos' risk. Yeah. Without Atreus... He's just like the god of destruction, right? And there's no, there's no need. And even uh, in the original trilogy of games, the the whole thing is you don't really feel for Kratos. He's just a reason to hack and slaughter your way up to Zeus. But the 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 kicking off thing is that his family was murdered, or he he was made to murder his family, right? Yeah. So I think it's a good idea to make us be like, yeah, Atreus is pretty cool. I don't want to play for him with him for like another two hours but no. he's a cool guy and like oh yeah that's right he is like he did mature a lot and, and he's like compelling and loves his dad and all that stuff and then finally we're back as Kratos let's do another 50 hours as Kratos you know <laughs> um, I will say because you just described Kratos yeah we've said it doesn't really relate to the game if they ever made any live action which we don't think they probably should but if they did can't cast anyone else has to be Christopher Judge has to be has to be 100% and I would do where he isn't actually like what because here is he's super white right we presume yeah. that was his skin and that, that was a tattoo I would make it like war paint where we see Christopher Judge as Christopher Judge yeah and then whatever happens happens he goes right well I'm god of warring it picks up his his thing goes to like picks up some ash and waters it down and paints himself white yeah. and paints the red on they never actually address it, do they, in any of the games? No. I haven't played all of the all of the no. original three. He just looks like that. He just looks like that. Yeah. So um, it'd be very interesting. I think that would be the better way to yeah. do it because war paint sounds looks and sounds more. It'd be so sick as well. As also, well. like I don't, I don't have any problem with like the whole like oh Christopher Judge is a black guy, except that Kratos is incredibly white. Yeah, but if this you cover isn't a real him, pigment of cut skin. Right. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, I know he's supposed to be a Spartan. Yeah, but at some point. There, there is no other casting for yeah. this, right? Not only has he got the voice, but he's the right build. He's good. He's a good enough actor. Like you couldn't, you couldn't cast The Rock. Mm. You couldn't cast who else? Axon is like my, Henry Cavill. Wouldn't be a good Henry Kratos. Cavill now plays everything. That's so, true. Henry, it's Henry so. Cavill as Atreus. Henry Cavill as Freya. He's doing Freya, guys. <laughs> he he only plays a, a few less people than Troy Baker. Basically, the joke is gonna turn into yeah. Henry Cavill. Everyone is, is now Henry playing. Cavill, yeah. <laughs> um. I'm so, really excited for the game, though. I'm really excited as well. And now that I think about it, because I just thought about the Freya thing, like I said, so there's like yeah. the the fight between Thor and Kratos because he killed yeah. his kids. Yeah. Uh, the fight between probably Odin because he's in his realm, essentially. That's You'd like, think it has to happen, right? Yeah. Got to. He's in Midgard and he's, he travels also to like Alfheim, all the other places that is kind of under the control of Odin yeah, and stuff like that. Anything that ends in a Heim is the Norse Exactly. Thing, yeah, so he's, he's going to be pissed off with that regard. Yeah. And also I've been destroying all of his birds and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. He's going to be very pissed well, about that's that. The thing. I think that would, what would make for two, one or two very good boss fights is the crows. I think it's uh, Odin's eye. Odin's o Odin has two crows, two right. ravens whose names I forget, Funin and Moonin, something like that. It's like knowledge and sight or something. Right. But that would make for a good fight where you have to fight these two shifting beings uh, before you can get to Odin or before you can get to Thor. Right. Mm. Um, so there's plenty of good fights coming up. Freya, potentially the Ravens, Odin, Thor. There's a lot. And I, and then when I list them out like that, I think to myself, well, shit, maybe it is two games. Again, I don't want it to be, they leave it on a cliffhanger and then it's yeah. like, great, now we have to wait three years for the next game or four years, however long yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be. But there is a lot to do. I would rather get two games over the course of eight to ten years mm. that are as good as God of War 4 was yeah. than one game soon enough because i want to play it that doesn't properly wrap things up or ends it poorly and then they do make a third game but god of war 6 is just uh mm. pretend that they stopped at five like you don't want that yeah i'd rather wait for the right product for everything to be done properly you know like little things like for example because we mentioned the last of us 2 you should be able to choose at the end 
the ending of whether or not you kill Abby. Yeah, it would make it way more impactful and yeah. connects to you. Right. Because it's your decision. You, it gets to your repercussions. Yeah. And I, I think we said that you should, if you kill her, she bites off your fingers. And yeah. if you let her go, you keep them, right? And then that way, like, depending on your act, did you, if you get revenge for Joel, you basically lose him entirely because you can't, because yeah. Ellie can't play the guitar. It's the one thing she has of Joel left, right? If you Spoiler let her go. Spoiler for Last of Us 2, by the yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> You should have been playing this. But if you let her go, then she can still play the guitar. And so even though Joel is dead, she keeps him with her. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's again, the point of the revenge story is that revenge isn't really worth it. If you if you go plan on revenge, dig two graves, it's all that yeah. thing, right? So give us the give us the choice. That's all we need is give us do, you know, do it for the PS5 update. Give us the choice at the end. This is the thing. We I at the time when we stumbled upon that, because we did it, we just did a discussion yeah, about we just talking, part two. Yeah. We stumbled upon that, and just think about that for a second. You're in that moment where you've got Abby's head under the water, and you have a choice. It goes, let Abby go, or kill her. Yeah, it's an instinct decision. You get like five seconds to decide. And if you don't, the canon ending is that you kill her. Let's say exactly. That, right? But say you kill her and you're like, yes, I finally got back at this bitch. Yeah. But in that time, she bites your fingers off. And then when you get back to the house, you're like, oh my God, I've lost that part of, yeah. of because Joel. Because it was my choice to do it this way. Exactly. I lost, uh, or Ellie lo loses this bit of Joel. Exactly. Yeah. And then think about the flip side where you're like, no, do you know what? I actually do understand this point of this story. Revenge is not good. I'm not going to do it. And then you go home and then you have that nice moment, that nice memory of yeah, Joel. Yeah, plays like, plays take where, me on. Or, something like or, that. And then it just ends like that. Think about the impact. Wouldn't that be so good? Also, because that's more hopeful. Where she, if she plays the song that um, it well, it is "Take Me On," isn't it? Where uh, yeah. Dina, Diana, De Dina, Dina, yeah, uh, watches her do the rendition of "Take Me On." If she comes back to the house and plays "Take Me On," then it's like okay, maybe there is hope for her and Dina and the kid. Yeah, and she has kept Joel's soul alive and all this stuff. Right? There is there's a hopeful ending. Yeah, and then there's a, like a oh man, this world is really tough. You lose everything ending. Yeah. There's so much more to it. I all from that one decision. Just press like square or triangle. It's all you had to do. Um, I wish I, they'd come to us and be like, do you know, just one, one, one thing. Yeah. Uh, one fine. thing. I, the other thing I would like is I, The Witcher 3 did this really well, yeah. which was that it gave you dilemmas. I want it to be something like that. So like that ending with Abby, there isn't a right or a wrong decision mm. for that, right? Yeah. Uh, you you get something from killing her. You get something from letting her live. Yeah. Um. But you also lose something, and I want those dilemmas. Like in The Witcher Three, there are almost always whatever choice you pick has a bad outcome, mm. but so does the other choice. Yeah. Right. And I want more of those decisions where you're like, in a world where the stakes are this high, so say for Kratos, for example, I would like to see a couple of decisions. By the way, not huge. The end is always going to have to be you fight Thor. Yeah. But like, how you get there, or what. Like maybe you kill a guy and that means that a merchant is saved. So at the end, you know, that guy that maybe you weren't sure about killing but did kill, you got a merchant that's really useful at the end. Mm. So you want a little bit more of a, like a, not completely, but sub-divergent sort of story where it goes out but then it comes back. back to Thor, right? All paths lead back to Thor. Yeah. But how about like, um, for example, like you can save one, or save the other kind yeah. of thing, right? And whichever one you save at the end, let's say it's two merchants, one has a weapon, one's a weapons vendor, one's an armor vendor, yeah. for example. And you won't know this the first time you play it through, just as an example. And both should suck. It should be like, this is a person that really needs saving. This is a person that really needs saving. Uh, and they're in this impossible situation. What do you do? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. to, to One, to give us more empathy towards Kratos, you know? Yeah. And to the world that we're in. Uh, and two, I like. I just like the idea of having to make tough decisions. Yeah, you know. Do you know what I like about the the kind of tough decisions that I like? Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. I like it the way they do it in The uh -huh. Witcher and stuff like that, yeah. the way that we described it for Last of Us. I like the kind of decisions that aren't very obvious. So say like you saw, like, I don't know, like a dragon's fighting those two people, like you said, yeah. and you go over to try and help. You're like, all right, I'm going to go help. And you go to the closest one, you save him, but then the other one just gets murked. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit, I can't believe the story went that way. Yeah. And you don't know, but if you had by chance gone the other way, then you would have saved the other person. Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then the whole story plays out. Exactly. And then we come to our conversation, we go, yeah, the armorer. Well, I was like, wait a minute, your armorer lived? Even, Hold on, what? Right. Well, or even better, what happens if you, you go to help them? Or you, or you pick one of the routes, right? And one of them, 
you save and he helps you. And one of them you save and that guy's salty that you got his brother killed. Yeah. And he beefs you out. Yeah. Like if you do one, let's say it's like a 10% chance you get everything wrong. And then in your final fight with Thor, this guy jumps in to help Thor. Shit. Like the NPC comes to beef you out and he's like, for my brother, like left option guy. And then beefs you out. It's not very hard, but it just adds an extra layer of difficulty. Little things like that. Silly stuff. The the main thing though, I mean, as long as we're coming up with silly ideas, we're coming yeah, we're up with stuff. Vibing, we're, we're, we're just vibing, man. We're just chilling here this is the true game of podcast we're just two yeah. dudes rubbing dicks and whatnot together we shouldn't be saying it on this channel um, yeah, yeah do you know what <laughs> let's talk about that real quick <laughs> last night i was watching you play you were streaming and stuff mm-hmm. and uh i don't know if you caught the comment but i said that it's a good thing we're not monetized because if we were um uh, we would be getting demonetized don't know what you're which is exactly what happened to the other channel which is why we have the second channel by the way if you guys are new <laughs> <laughs> um, and you didn't know I promise we won't do too much YouTube chilling but we have two channels yes the bi- this is kind of our de facto main channel now we have a bigger channel Conversations which is why all our branding is Conversations and uh, over on that we've got like Anime Club Movie Club it's kind of similar to Streamcast but for like movies and stuff um, that channel the reason we're over here has been uh, demonetized well it's not demonetized actually it's just super blacklisted it's shadow banned and stuff it's re- really weird that the ads are still there um, <laughs> well YouTube still has to make their money <laughs> right exactly but uh, let's try and not do that to this one maybe maybe you see where we're going but that's why your support over at patreon.com forward slash conversation is such a great help because yes. it keeps everything going because we can't get it from anywhere else true um and let me read out one of these comments here from uh, yeah. our boy Super Whale Ben, who yes. wrote in at patreon.com forward slash conversation, okay. where we read out all of our comments first over there because they are big bros. Yeah. Um, so first half of his comment is about something else we're going to talk about later. But he also writes, he goes, as for God of War 2, I hope it's set quite a few years after the first one. I wanted to show how great Kratos and Atreus' relationship is after five or six years or however long it's been. I'd like to see the stage in Atreus' life where he's becoming more independent. It will be great to see to show Kratos teaching him how to be a man and how to be his, uh, on his own. However, I want to see that the struggle of Kratos and not being able to be, not being able to be his son, let his son go, sorry. Uh, I imagine it being like parents with kids going off to uni. I don't know. I think it would be an interesting thing for them to play around with. I like that idea. I like the idea. I just I've had that um God of War that final mural up there for yeah. a while. It definitely looks like Atreus is about the same age. Yeah. Um I've got it here as well. I think it looks a little bit bigger to me, but maybe how can yeah. you tell it's a is, mural? And also it's like in a cave painting kind of style. Yeah. It's not stylistically very easy to tell. One of the things that I would like is that for a cuz Atreus is Loki. Yeah. For Atreus to be a Loki, to be who he's supposed to be. So rather than like it being a uh, Kratos letting him go, it needs to be Kratos letting him be Loki, being like his being himself in his nature and then supporting that, like coming to terms with it and supporting him in his godhood. Like one of the reasons Kratos is so powerful and so strong now is that he's accepted he's a god and um, well, actually, in the whole of that thing, he's trying to hide from being a god. But yeah. you know what I mean. Like, but he knows exactly he what knows, he is. He knows he's trying to hide it to, set, to protect his son. Right. Isn't it? He knows exactly what it what he is, mm. and he's trying to protect his son from what that means, from what that kind of life leads you to. He wants him to have more choice, right? And um, I'd like that to be the uh, the risk, mm. which is that if he accepts who he is, he may be able to save this thing or save himself or save whatever. But that means he'll be a god, and Kratos knows what that means, mm. right? And then ultimately supporting whatever he chooses. That could be the choice. It Maybe could... that's the choice. You play as a Atreus at that final thing and you decide. Do you go Loki or Atreus? Do you pick your two destinies? The thing is, uh, it's going to be tough because it's uh, it's not sticking strictly to Norse mythology. No, right? this is Which... exactly how it goes. Kratos is in the myths. Kratos, the myths? yeah. I was going to say he is. I, I think he was also in the MCU movie as well. He for was. Thor. They were like, yeah. Kratos, God of War. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, everybody no, no, no. knows. Like after um, his sister destroying Asgard and all that stuff, like Thor's real big bad other than the snake, Kratos. Kratos right there. Um, we saw Atreus... Mm almost go like mini rage a bit like spartan rage of yeah we did see that so 
That was I'm great. Imagining... Cute, not cute, but I liked it. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. But... <laughs> um, but it will be if we are going to do a bit of a time skip where he's a bit older and he's training and stuff like that. I imagine that gets a little bit more fully fledged out and it gets a bit more. He gets a bit more control over it and he doesn't pass out immediately when he when he has it. And obviously, there's something as well to his to his sickness that they're probably going to explain eventually. They're like, is it the conflicting godhood inside him or something like that? I don't uh, know. I. But we have to. The thing is, he can't go full Loki because he has other god in him, and it? it's going to be like, yeah, you can't. True. Go, I'll just forget. You know, I, don't worry. About it, I'll just forget it. I'll just forget it. I think I I choose to believe his like sickness is from him. It's kind of a metaphor, which is like trying to be something that you aren't. Right now, he was trying to be a normal kid because he didn't know he was a deity. That's true, and I think that's metaphorically really important. Again, look, sometimes the curtains are just red. Like, I, to- I totally get it. But I think... Um, I think that's probably the way that they'll go, which is that trying... Kratos trying for him not to be a god because going so against your nature yeah. is, is generally bad for you. And it's kind of like a be-who-you-are kind of deal, yeah. you know? Um, I think that's probably the way it will go. I also I don't know if they're even going to do the sickness. The sickness was good because the sickness was good because Kratos's relationship with the Tress was so sketchy, mm. and Kratos is, is a very tough, strong. He's like a sledgehammer in human form, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he breaks stuff really easily, and suddenly he's got this young boy that he has to look after, who's also sickly. Like it just adds to that, like. That, that's why you know you see him go to touch him and he's like he's what it's like if he touched Atreus's shoulder like on that boat yeah. that he'll just crumble into dust or he'll just accidentally snap him in half because he's a go- like the dude can cut a mountain in half yeah the, you know the dude Kratos is uh, my brother has this uh, theory which is Kratos is like god power is he's as strong as he needs to be right so he, it does seem like it get, he gets more powerful at some yeah, point more and less powerful it's yeah. as strong as he thinks he is right. which technically means well if atreus is the risk nothing can stop yeah. kratos right he will he will destroy his way to saving atreus which is why we whatever the risk is is going to have to be really really well done which is why i think separating them is the way to go mm. it's why i think thor comes and takes atreus away and kicks atreus to uh kicks kratos to like say egypt yeah or, or wherever, just somewhere we can get some really interesting looking, different culture, different setting, um, and where he can still suddenly not be as strong now because mm. he's like psychologically damaged. It's not his body that you defeat. Kratos is a Superman. You don't fight Superman. No. You fight Clark Kent, right? Same kind of deal. That's how I would beat Kratos. I wouldn't fight Kratos. But uh, you know, yeah. It's like, first of all, I wouldn't fight Kratos. Right. <laughs> this is how you win in a fight against Kratos. Don't Run fight away. Kratos. <laughs> Have you seen that video of like, this is how you fight someone in a knife fight. If that person's got a knife, you haven't got anything, this is what you do. He just runs away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how you win. That's, that's 100% you'll win every knife fight like that. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's why, because with Atreus there, uh, Kratos always has the thing that he will need to gain, to, to, to go Super Saiyan. Mm. Do you think there might be more to tell with the mother? Oh God, I hope so. Because, oh God, I hope so. Because we all we knew is that she died, and then right at the end we got all this information. It's like, yeah. oh my God, she helped the frost giants. Wait, she was well, a she god was as a well. Frost giant, what yeah. those? Oh my God, what's going on? So like all this thing blew up, and it was like, all right, fade to black. See you later. Yeah. It's like. We no. want more. Yeah, you, Give me more. You like so, open the book of questions exactly. and then just cut to the face. You see of this? Back. See this? All right, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because so, I'd like to see more of her. Also, I think it would be interesting to find out for Kratos to find out what Atreus is because ice giants and gods aren't necessarily different things. I was going to say. They're like a different, like, you know, you know uh, there are different races of humans, but we're all human. Yeah. Same sort of deal. Like, you might have different races of, like, magical being in the Norse but like that snake is not technically anything it's not technically actually maybe it is an ice giant but because it, it comes from Loki yeah but Loki is a mi- in this version of the canon is mixed race so he's, he's yeah. mixed uh, Greek pantheon and Norse pantheon mm. so so but like that thing beefs out Thor it's like that's the that's the Ragnarok yeah the Ragnarok is when those two fight that was another thing as well so we 
<laughs> just to add to the things that could possibly happen. I freaking in this love story. this discussion, man. Let's this is great. Yeah. It's great. You know, this is exactly what I was hoping for. I hope you guys enjoying it as well. So on top of the whole Freya issue because she's still pissed, uh, Thor being pissed that you killed the sons, Odin probably being pissed because you're mixed up all in Midgard. You're I a think- god that shouldn't be there. Oh yeah. Um, and Ragnarok, which is in the name. Or is it? We don't know if that's actually going to be the name. Though. Okay, okay. Because well, the, well, the funny I'm Cause, taking cause this. All the things we've heard is Ragnarok is coming, but it hasn't actually been in any of the promo stuff, has it? Exactly. I think I think they Once. might have put it down in the in that teaser video. But yeah, I think they did. This is the funny thing, you know, Cory Barlog, the biggest troll in gaming yeah. ever. Cory Barlog. Uh, yeah. Barlog. Um, he he tweeted out. He quote tweeted PlayStation Universe's article saying God of War Ragnarok is Sony's Herman Hulse most anticipated game. He's the the new president of Sony yeah, Entertainment. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, yeah, God of War Ragnarok is my most anticipated game. Um, and he quote tweeted going, have, how how have I never heard of this game? And what I think he means is I've never heard of that title yeah, because yeah. it's not actually called it's God of War official, yeah. Ragnarok. Now that's just me being like, all right, lads, let's get on the tin for hat. Let's do this, boys. Let's go. Turn it backwards yeah. even. It's like God um, of War, Ice Giant's Revenge. Whatever or it's like going to yeah, be, yeah. or like Thor's Revenge or something like yeah. that. But Love it, and Thunder. Oh my God. How did you come up that's with that great name? Time. I'm just amazing at branding. Oh my God. You're just great at that. <laughs> You know, they should maybe use that for some of the Thor movies in the MCU. They really should. I think that would be a good one. Yeah. Uh, but that's just me. It could just be that it's going to be Ragnarok and we're just all fucking around here being dickheads. I mean, but, maybe um, he, he's one of those guys that if anybody, if you haven't watched, um, what's it called? Love? Raising Kratos. Yes. There's a documentary. It's like an hour and a half, something like that. Two hours. Oh, it's two, it's really if, it flies if it by. Flies by. I've watched it three times and I'm like, whoa, is that the time? <laughs> You you actually mentioned it when we were le- when I was leaving one day. You were like, "Have you seen this? Like, let's just start it." And we watched the whole thing and didn't even notice. Yeah, uh, it's it's a really good docu about as they were making God of War, mm. uh, and it actually raises even more questions. Like, how did they know it was going to be this good? Do you think they just did the filming anyway? The filming seems to be before the genesis of the game. Yeah, like They're at like- what point do you know? Because because look, <laughs> for example, you know when the Witcher TV series came out, yeah, and before it actually aired on Netflix, it had been renewed for a second season. Makes sense to me, yeah. right? Like, you know what you've got. Because they saw it. They're like, yeah. this is great. I Absolutely. wasn't believing it. And even in making it, you're like, yeah, I'm going to pitch for the second season. You, yeah. you will know what you have at some point. Sometimes you just know. Yeah. And that's one of them, right? But this starts way before that. This starts way before that. So anyway, it's a really interesting yeah. documentary on like on what they're doing. And um, in the, anyway, the point is in that you see that Corey is uh, not always the most tuned to the temperature of the room for his jokes and the things that he says. We love you. Corey, love your products. Anytime you want to come onto the podcast, you'll yep. be the number one guest. We'll talk for seven hours like we normally do on podcasts. Yeah, of course. You'll get a special seat. We have a special seat here. It's a beanbag chair over there. You can sit on yeah, that if you yeah. like. Um, Just fly we'll, to London. Is that you? We'll we'll have you fly yourself out of, over to <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, and uh, we'll have a great conversation. But sometimes some of the jokes that he says in those things, like one time he does like an imitation of one of the other yeah, higher yeah, execs yeah, yeah, that's yeah. there. And it's totally not in the temperature of the room, like he said. And then he's just like, yeah, I was just joking. And they're like... Yeah, it, it, it kills okay. the... Yeah, it's one of those ones where it kills the vibe so hard that it's hard to pick up the next bit of the conversation. Yeah. So my, my point is that maybe it's just a weird tweet. He, he's a very weird guy. Well, and so I love like, him for what it. What if he hasn't yeah. slept in 36 hours, which is totally possible for these kinds of guys, right? Super creative, yeah. in a high-stress job. Like, he may not have slept for two days. Yeah. And he's like thinks it'll be really funny it's not freaking funny. it could just be that it could just be that you know who knows anyway i saw that and i was like what if guys right, what right. if it's not god of all ragnarok whoa, whoa, whoa. well because you know <laughs> ragnarok might be the one for the sixth game if they're doing a trilogy then yeah. ragnarok being like the end makes yes. sense for for number six i was gonna say that that or number three is technically a reboot you know what i mean this would be shut up chat <laughs> you know what I, you know what i meant diogo's in there i'm actually <laughs> i watch movies at different fra- different frame rates <laughs> <laughs> idiot <laughs> that's such an inside joke that everyone's oh gonna my god that. um that's so yeah so funny uh that that could be 
done in another game because yeah. that by itself Ragnarok by itself yeah. is such a huge battle and there's so much you can do in terms of setup right. preparation and whatnot and that could be its own game by itself or even finding out what Loki's role in it like the yeah. whole next game could well be like them answering those questions about the mum and what is Loki's job what was the stuff with the painting on the walls why did this culture of, of mm. people one why did Thor exterminate this entire race of people racist Definitely Technically, racist. Thor's an Aryan as well. Nazi. Nazi. You um, see, blonde, blue hair, uh, blonde hair, blue blo eyes, blonde eyes, blonde blue eyes, hair. blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, why were they exterminated? Why did um, the chick? How did they meet? Mm. How did Kratos and this chick meet? And did Kratos know? Like, Kratos knew about himself. He says in the end, it's like your mother had even secrets from me. Right almost as if like he was but he didn't seem too shocked and also does yes, she, did, I think she knew I didn't think he knew anything because this could this could add I hate to be the guy that's always talking about romances and stuff in games but it yeah. adds, it's romance and, and like especially this like someone that your character love, two characters love each other enough to bring a whole new life into existence it's mm -hmm. a big deal for characters and stuff sounds like the mother character the chick knew mm. about like the who her kid was and the prophecy and stuff that would yeah. make sense so when she meets the Kratos, like maybe she's doing it for the prophecy. Maybe then they then fall in love. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, and we get to watch that. Like, like every um, an arranged marriage growing into love, or, right, something or, or like. the whole like, oh, I'm taking the nerdy girl to prom for a dare, but then by the end of it, no, no, I really want to go to prom with you. Yeah, yeah. The football captain. Thing. All the time, I do take the nerdy girl to prom. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm okay. the nerdy girl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> And now we're in love. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after until <laughs> Thor arrived. Like, and maybe she didn't die. Maybe she was killed. That's a good question. I, do you know what? That's something I really want. Now that we've said it, I really want either flashbacks into their relationship uh, or something like it unquestionably that. unquestionably needs to happen. Have to know. Have to know. Because Too many questions. Have to know. Exactly. Have to know. Have to know. Because even in the, uh, there was the moment where Kratos went into, you know, they went to that place where it was taken over by the elves. The, yeah, is it Alfheim yeah, yeah. where they were getting the yeah. light? Um, and he goes into the light and he almost hears like her voice and right, whatnot. Calling to him, yeah. And he tries to go after her and it's sort of like, he really wants to see yeah. her again, really loves her clearly. Just that was enough to hook me and go, you know what? I need to know yeah. more about this relationship. So that's something I think we should have in, in God yes. of War. More relationship with, with the mother. We need to know. Find out how it happened. We need to know. How Atreus came about, how they met. We need to see the crucial sex scene. Of Obviously, course. we need to have that. In, in high def, mm. in detail. Maybe this can be the first 8K title on the PS5. That's, That's, That's all we need. It's right just there. that one scene. <laughs> just that one scene. <laughs> it reminds me of like Zack Snyder shooting everything in IMAX. Well, not everything in IMAX, yeah. just this one sex scene. Right, right. <laughs> I think the other thing is that the first three games were yeah. like a cult hit, but they were basically hack and slash games. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like, it was of its time. That's what it was. God of War 4, let's just call it 4, is still technically kind of a, a, like an, a sl open with invisible borders world hack and slash kind of hack and slash RPG. But the thing that made 4 totally different from the first three is that it has a real story. Yeah. Not just revenge. Revenge is okay, but like it had, we had character development. We had real, like not romance, but like um, emotional development between kratos and, and atreus like there's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff there there is that hint of romance because it's not just like a little bit of me i played a few of the i think i played one and three of the original trilogy i always got the sense that kratos was killing his way through the gods because they took something away from him mm -hmm. rather than because they're the reason his family's dead if you see what i mean right and this atreus and this kratos. kratos thank you seems to be much more not emotional, like emotionally developed. Yeah, I get that. And I think we really need to. It's also the thing that set this. The reason this game's set apart is because it really there's real human stories in it, mm. where before it was just a trilogy of revenge. Revenge is the reason to get you into these cool fights. And they also tried to make it more about gods and stuff like yeah. that, like God of War. Whereas, so we didn't have a connection to it and yeah. whatnot. It's the reason 
sorry to bring this back to Superman again, but it's the reason why I think Superman's such a... Some people say he's not relatable, but it's like you're not trying to relate to the correct part of the character. He's Clark Kent. That's the part... And that's the human. That's you the, should be able to connect with that, the human. That's why I hate most of the Superman movies. Yeah. Because very rarely do we get any Clark Kent. You need to you get know. the solid Clark Kent. That's stuff. why I do genuinely, unironically, think Smallville's likely to be the best Superman thing ever. And the best scenes in Man of Steel mm. are the um, Jonathan scenes yeah That's, that is the most superman we get to see and it's like two throwaway scenes can i still be your son you are my son that's that, the heart there, there. You go. good that, that's exactly my point exactly yeah that's the human element and that's why this version creates so much better because we get to see the hu- the person inside not just the god exactly. of, of war um so i think we desperately need it i will say this though because the original question was like are you excited for it and stuff yeah i'm excited just talking about it so yes I, I, I'm really glad you brought this up this has been a great little topic yeah I wanted to sort of mix things up a little bit normally we talk a lot about the new stuff which yeah. I'm not going to take away from but I wanted to make a nice conversation hopefully in most of our our, our podcasts yeah. at the beginning and then we talk some other stuff about that I think it went well quite for the first it's, time it's, the problem is we both love that game so much Yes. for you it's unequivocally the best game ever made for me it's like the best game ever oh look there's The Last of Us 2 is in there and somewhere then, there you know, I'm like, oh, is the Witcher? Three? But it's like, it's, so most impressive. of the time it's that, yeah. right? So good. So incredibly good. And I'm, I feel so burnt from Cyberpunk <sighs> that I'm, I'm desperately trying not to overhype it. We've been burnt so badly. It oh was God. beyond the third degree burn. That's how bad it was. Don't get me wrong. Like, I always knew about Cyberpunk just to, in relevance to this, that the story wouldn't be like as catching because there's no Siri, right? Yeah. Or I assumed there would be no father daughter or, or father child aspect to this, mm. right? Which was true. It's still a good story. I think there is a really good story hidden away under all those bugs. Yeah. So I, I kind of knew that. I set myself up for it, but I thought the game would be great and I have enjoyed it. Yeah. But it isn't The Witcher, mm-hmm. right? Doesn't, things don't seem to develop organically. And then it has like, I mean, I got to say, when, when Gelt finds Siri in the hut, that is one of my all-time like most emotional gaming moments. It's so good, and when this guy that can't feel emotion is like just utterly crushed, and you can see he like this thing is strong enough that makes him feel something. Yeah, man, so good. It's good. And so I, I knew Cyberpunk wouldn't be as good as that. Probably wouldn't have those moments in it. But you what? You thought it'd be something, right? And I'm so burnt from that, and I'm so determined not to let myself date these men again <laughs> i was know? gonna say do you know what i've just discovered i've, I've been dating the wrong yeah. men i I've always going up the these guys, guys at biker bars they're all tattooed <laughs> working for the hell's angels so like, i'm kind of gonna work on me for a little right, bit yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go to thailand <laughs> teach english like, discover myself um <laughs> and i'm not gonna open myself up to that kind of stuff ever again okay right right, right exactly yeah i get I, that feeling I yeah that feeling. so so it's not that i don't i'm not so excited for this i really yeah. am it's that i don't want to let myself build it up because mm. its competition is God of War. Yeah, it's the my as I said the best. How can you like? You know, I can beat it. We've seen it so many times. The Matrix, the, the first Matrix, is so good, yeah. so good. And the Matrix two, oh, maybe not. I maybe, mean, oh god, they made a third one. No, he stopped you know? the bullets in in, in the middle. There. That's better, right. right? It's better, right? And he did it. It's just cooler. <laughs> so. Like, I, I'm worried that we'll get, like, a Matrix tour. Not, I don't think it'll be anywhere near that bad. Yeah. But, like, the thing that has to compete with is the greatest game ever made. Ever made. Yeah. Ever made. See, what my Tough, real fear Tough. is, and the reason why I brought up that Last of Us 2 killing Joel at the beginning yeah. is that Last of Us went from, this is such a powerful emotional story about a man and a girl who is effectively his daughter and they they have this special bond they go through tough times but they make it through in this dying world very basically yeah and then in the second one it was pretty much a massive punch to your gut that you felt throughout the entire game because there was never a happy moment throughout that thing it was just always emotion and always my God, this I is... I mean, they twist the knife as well with the flashbacks. Exactly. If they hadn't put the flashbacks in, I never would have played it, though. Exa- it's, it's true. It's true. You needed yeah, those bits. Yeah. But I hope that they don't do that with God of War. I, I hope they don't go, we gave you the great thing that you loved here. Now we're going to make... We're going to rip apart your emotions. I really don't want to do that. Thing, as much as I loved God, uh, Last of Us Part 2. Yeah, and I actually did as well. Yeah. Um, but I think that should be the only one. Let's, let's, let's keep it as a thing. Yeah, it's like it's a good way to... I'm glad someone did it. Yeah. And it actually turned out great and liked the story, liked the setting, all that stuff. 
maybe let's just not do it that way anymore like had to be tested yeah but let's like and the, that test went really good let's just not do that anymore i think um my worry is that i don't buy atreus being it so like if something cool, kills Kratos, there's no way Atreus is getting there. Yeah. There's no way Atreus at full power Loki is getting there because yeah. this is Kratos. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to buy that as well. The the thing the 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 Unless, Ellie thing works because yeah. it's humans in a human world. She's a human right. in the day and she's fucking badass and yeah. she wants to just she's determined by revenge right, and right. and her her it, memory of Joel. Ellie's thing works in the same way that like Aloy works. Like I don't have a problem with uh, Horizon Horizon Zero Fun being uh, the main character being a girl. Horizon Zero Fun. Yeah. Oh, so you said, I get it. I thought you was like Horizon. Why did you put fun at the end there? Right. Oh, zero fun. Yeah, I, get, yeah. I get it. Get it? Yeah. See, zero fun because yeah. you didn't have fun. Yeah, yeah. Get it? Yeah, exactly. You got it. It makes sense that zero Horizon fun. Four out of Ten Dawn. <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's okay that you're playing a girl. Yeah. Right. Because. Uh, you're fighting robo t-rexes yeah and so it doesn't matter if you're a guy that can deadlift 500 pounds no one could it's, it's the right. same thing exactly regardless. it doesn't it doesn't yeah. care about you but if you're like batman yeah it makes sense for batman to be like let's say ben affleck mm. and not uh what's that is it ruby rose oh uh the batgirl she was it was yeah. ruby rose at one point yeah like as just as an example like even in full batman armor i'm i'm not fight i'm not gonna fight regular ben affleck yeah but i'll absolutely fight ruby rose as, as batgirl yeah. batwoman batman whatever right Bat, batgirl i think it is yeah like that the the human element like i don't want to fight ben affleck yeah yeah but i'll i'll, I'll fight a girl <laughs> you i'll know? fight you know in bat in super suit stuff right yeah. but for aloy it makes perfect sense and then in the same way like with ellie it doesn't matter that she's a girl no. or um or that joel's a guy because it's the zombie horde. Zombie yeah. horde doesn't care what's between your legs. It's going to yeah. eat you anyway, right? The clickers doesn't matter if you're Joy. It's going to get you in one shot. Yeah. So it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And then when she is fighting humans, she's in guns. Yeah. And and like and she's crossed explosives as well. Pulls out a fucking knife from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah fucking great. It, Ellie, I freaking love Ellie. That was the moment that made me fall in love with that character as well. Is in the first one where the uh, guard buzzes her and finds out she's infected yeah and then joel's like wait what the hell and she pulls out a knife and she shanks again i was Shank. like i freaking vibe with this chick she's doing good she's gonna make it far in this world yeah. she's gonna make it far as well so one other thing about god of war okay we're not done sick the release date yeah let's 22. discuss this at the earliest 22 so previously i was saying i have faith in 2021 because purely they made the decision to say that no yeah. one was twisting their arm no one was knocking at their door because we were all realistic we were like the last god of war came out two and a bit years ago we can't hear about yeah. this for another year and a half maybe something yeah. like that that's about the right timeline yeah and then they came out and they were like god of war ragnarok uh, winter's coming and stuff like that yeah. and they were and they were like 2021 we're like that's insane that's so soon god and they made all the decisions when and that was, was that announcement though? uh it was the playstation 5 uh, state of play which was november oh yeah that's right because because i thought it was actually earlier in 2020 when that happened and a bit of me was like maybe they think this whole thing will the lockdowns and stuff is going to we were blow deep over. into the pandemic when yeah. they when they did this. that's what was so shocking to me yeah that's right that, i was really shocked because i was like this thing doesn't look like it's ending yeah we have had all these manufacturing constraints for the consoles even games all this stuff's getting delayed are mm. they sure we did try to square that circle like almost all the assets from god of war 4 can be reused yeah so Just they have the, assets. the resolution of stuff maybe they rework some of the textures right. that you'll see but they don't need to come up with. They need to be like, okay, so what does Atre what does Atreus look like? God of what does God, what does Kratos look like in this right, new right. game? God, God of War Four was a ground up rework. Yeah. So every they started from fresh. They don't have to do that again for the next one. So that cuts what like apparently, one and a half, two years off. I was gonna say they did that game in five years apparently. Yeah. So if you got one and a half years out, let's call it two years. Like, I think you can realistically cut off two years. Yeah, three. So three years. So twenty eighteen to twenty one. I can I can see it, but I also feel like Horizon which is 2017 and we knew that game the next one's coming out way before god of war and then i feel like if as much as i don't like horizon mm. it is a banger it's a it's a triple a title for sony right and, and it's become like a temple for sony it's yeah like, it's people one of the things you always show it in the yeah. in the promo reels right yeah. always because it's a, especially because the aesthetic is so good dinosaurs oh dinosaurs, my god does it look good plus a hot redhead like yeah perfect perfect it, so good um so you, I feel like if you have two of those type of games come out, that mm. they 
they compete head to head. I I feel like they almost did that last year as well. Like you had Last of Us Two and, and Sucker Punches. Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima. they did them back to back, month to month. There was a month gap between them. We I thought Ghost of Tsushima was fricked. Yes, yeah, so bad. I was like, they're gonna do that to a brand new IP. At least I feel like the games are so different stylistically yeah. in the way that they play in their story that it it worked out okay but even still even looking back on it i feel like it was a bad choice yeah should have been three months apart but minimum and even then probably not even in the I same think, year i think it even outsold the last of us oh the ghost team did incredibly well what it was is and that it was a ma- it's a masterpiece i was gonna say they came out with a masterpiece and end of the day you make a good product it's going to do yeah. its job it's yeah. gonna sell so i think that's what saved it really but i was like when i heard it i was like this is just bad yeah what who's bad the guy decision. that signed yeah. off on this i think that for those games coming out in the same year they need to be like six months apart and that's kind of ties into what i'm about to say here so jim ryan uh what's jim ryan's actual position is herman holst is the ceo guy oh uh, he's uh, um off the top of my head he is the uh not creative is he ceo yeah he's, he's ceo oh so, so he's no, no, no. president and ceo he's but uh, this is of the sony entertainment though not of sony He's, oh. he's president of Sony Entertainment. I think. I think that's right. Let me see, find out who Herman Holst is. Was it Herman Holst? Uh, he's so he's overseeing PlayStation's international network, and Jim Ryan is actual the, actually the president, the one that we keep seeing in the latest State of Play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's the he's the big guy and whatnot. Okay. He was interviewed by, I think it was it, it was one of the magazines, GQ magazine. That's who he was interviewed by. And this happened to be on the same day that they released also PlayStation VR 2 news, yeah, yeah. where they dropped the news about the state of play that's happening today. Yeah, which, which will be on. We're going to talk, we're going to make some crazy predictions because we have no other choice to, to no. put it into this podcast. Um, and he's also spoke about 2021's games. He was directly yeah. asked about them. And let me read you exactly what happened here. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm nervous. He goes... 2021 games, uh, do you guys, he goes, fair enough. This is from the previous question carrying on. We imagine you've got a roadmap for 2021 in terms of games and what um, what you want to release. How fixed are they given the disruptions of COVID-19? Has, uh, given the disruptions of COVID-19, has it caused any, any problems in development? Returnal recently got pushed back a month. Yeah. That's nothing, goes, by the way, but exactly. Okay, yeah. but he goes, yeah, we feel pretty good about Returnal, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Horizon Forbidden West. And you know, there are two approaches to this. You can either hold a date and put your game out irrespective of the quality, or you can ship it when it's right, which is a good thing to say right there. Yeah. But notice, he only mentioned three games there. Three 2021 games. Yeah. Returnal, Ratchet and Clank, and Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. And no mention of God and War whatsoever. I'm going to say this as well. I think Ratchet and Clank is going to be a banger. Simply because the, there's no such thing as a bad Ratchet and Clank game. They're all, they're, they're all good fun. Yeah, They're just fun and silly and they know exactly what they're doing, right? Mm. Um, you don't get bad Ratchet and Clank games. You just get, get ones that you prefer over the other ones. Mm. So th- Plus, it's going to be the first real PS5 only. That I'm super excited to see like use it as a tech demo yeah stuff like that i would like to see god of war come in 2022 mainly because i'm really concerned oh i'm there sorry i was twisting this to make it tighter and then i flipped the fuck <laughs> <way. laughs> went the wrong way just <laughs> i'm really concerned that we're going to have a, a drought year or two where all these bangers are going to come out at the at the beginning of the life cycle and then in like 24 to 27 nothing to play Sony's been really good in the past and been able to space them out even yeah. though we get like said, Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us right next to each other they never felt like there was a drought yeah. also one incredible way to end a generation oh my god yeah oh my god and Doom Eternal I mean Maybe it's not a Sony it exclusive way, exactly. but you know what I mean but um it would be what you said like the biggest Sony Santa Monica game coming out in the in the first year. Yeah. Um, the biggest uh, Gorilla game coming out in the first year. Yeah. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, one of your like mascot games and whatnot yeah. for coming out in the first year. Returnal, a brand new uh, IP from a, a studio that you guys have acquired, coming out in the first year. And then in like 2023, it's like, well, those games are, we bought those games. You need to give us yeah. a couple of years to do development. Right. And then there's nothing left. Exactly. Now, Sony Santa Monica do have another game apparently in the works of unannounced thing. I can but, believe it. Yeah, it's true. Which could come out in that time, maybe in between. Yeah. But I thought it was super interesting that he didn't mention God of War. And also, 
with Ratchet and Clank coming out in June, which yeah. is when it comes out, or July, one of those ones, I have to believe that Horizon Forbidden West then comes out in the later half of 2021. I'd expect November. There's no space for God of War now. And you can't have them two compete. You shouldn't have any titles competing. Yeah. Um, That's the smart business move. Yeah. And I'm looking at it and I'm just like, even with my, let's get hype, boys, get hype, son, you know, gift that I put on Twitter, even with that energy, I can't see a God of War fitting in 2021. Unless Horizon is just trash. And then they release it and then two weeks later, God of War, so to try and like cut the losses on that. <laughs> but, I, but I don't think it will be. Like, nah. well, there might be with Horizon is it's writing, mm. but the game itself is actually, the combat's fun. The aesthetic is, oh my God, so good. Mm. And I mean specifically like the robo dinosaurs and stuff. A lot of the landscape is like fairly open and stuff, but mm. whatever, like, fine i don't see it being bad mm. i just but my my beef with horizon zero fun is not that it's bad it's that it's not good right you know it's that it's missing the human story all they have to do they could just remake horizon and put a human freaking story in there yeah like like they do this weird um there's almost a potential romance in there for aloy uh the the there's a general lady whose son is kind of a a clumsy dude black boy whose name i forget i've forgotten it completely it's been a while since yeah. i played it and he he seems to have like a crush on aloy okay and i just get this weird like you remember from like maybe the 90s and 2000s like the feminist like you can have it all but focus on your career don't worry about family <laughs> i get that thing where she's like i'm not interested in a romance i'm focusing on my career right, right? of of beating Aries or whatever it is. I think they might have gone a, a touch overboard with uh, with that sort of like mentality yeah. because this was the first time that they're doing a brand new IP and they decided to go the route of having a female lead and I think they saw that, well they saw it as important because yeah. how many other, prior to that, how many other games had female leads? Not a lot for PlayStation Studios, none in fact. I'll give you an example. Though. But I'm just thinking that's what they, they probably saw that as less, you know, let's try and make her really powerful, but then they overdid it and made it unrealistic. I'll give you an example. And this is where people forget things. So I'm actually on Twitter, I'm on Twitter right now because it's just yeah. up. Well, my thing right now is, this, um, I think it's openly, is the, the name of the thing and it's got okay. a little, I think it's openly gay is what I think what it is because it's okay. a little gay, f uh, the rainbow flag. The flag, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the yeah, title yeah. is how this lesbian comic changed the way we view female characters in film. Right. And uh, because I was interested, I clicked that and I've heard of this, it's called the Bechdel test before. Right. Which is uh, for a female character to not be like just phoned in, she needs to have like a certain number of lines and they can't be about like a man or makeup or some shit like that i forget what it actually is if you google it right um sh should i google it and tell you but my point is that i i feel like they forgot that um you know aloy like romance is a big deal mm -hmm. like if you're gonna like i mentioned it earlier about kratos right to love someone enough to bring a new life into creation that's yeah. a big deal and this yeah. thing forgets that um women also choose to have children they're not like just baby factories right yeah. um and that a romance for Aloy would be very humanizing and it would make sense for her to be in this highly stressful world with like reduced resources and like reduced number of people and high stress. To seek companionship, to seek and comfort. De stress and is that a comfort of right. someone, yeah. Um and there was this character that was perfectly positioned to be that, or at least to yeah. like I think Aloy would have been way more co compelling if that had developed into a relationship and she'd had to leave it for the greater good. Yeah. That would have been so much better. Yeah. There would have been some actual character to Aloy. It's like she chose to make a sacrifice, a very heroic thing right there. It's quite nice. Vector test. Let me... Um, yeah, give it. Give, put, give the proper information for it, yeah. Uh, it asks two women... Okay, so it's about when two women talk to each other about something other than a man. The requirement of two... They must be... They Basically, the characters need to both be named... So it okay. can't just be woman A and woman B. It's got to be like right. Susie Jones speaking to like Joanna Johnson, right. um, who are developed characters, and they can't be talking about a man, and they can't be talking about whatever. Right? That's it's called the Beck Doctors. I think it's after this comic artist. Okay. I want to say. Um, the thing is that while all of that is is good and well, like romance makes sense for characters. Um, people aren't just always focused on their their roles and jobs, like maybe that's their overarching thing but in the day to day there's a lot of stuff that yeah. characters think about and that's my problem with Aloy and 
for this game to to be good, we'll need that. We'll need like human elements there. She needs to find mm. something wondrous. This game's also positioned for her to do that now. Yes. She, she should have done it in the first game. Yeah. But if she goes to a brand new land, like a brand new land. Yeah, it's like a whole new area that she's opened right. up there. She's never seen the coast. She's never seen things like that. Right. She's never she seen the ocean. To... She's never seen, hopefully, they will take almost all of the old robo dinosaur things and do brand new ones so mm. like uh we never saw a triceratops yeah so it's gotta be all of that stuff right sea turtle type thing right all new challenges all new th developments right um like we gotta think about someone going from like say they're in the middle of the forest in germany and then they end up in like the sahara in africa like yeah. all new animals all new challenges they need to be out of their element they need to like right. be wondrous and, and now she can be wondrous and she can learn about these new uh cultures of people that are here and how they trade and what things to watch out for and stuff so even though she didn't have that in the first one which she should have we can easily work it in it doesn't make any difference now mm. and without that i will say it's a bad game because that's what makes me not like horizon zero fun well let's see what happens if we maybe in this state of play we might get a, a like a trailer and whatnot and then also in the future God, episode, i hope so we're so close and we're already <laughs> near the end of february man exactly in a future episode we might do like we did for god of war what we excited about horizon uh, zero dawn or uh, for forbidden west sorry yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that so we can make that a dedicated episode but let's talk a little bit about this state of play okay the one thing that playstation did do yeah. to frick with us specifically yeah. is they went and announced this whole uh this whole state of play and they're like cool we're gonna do it six seven hours after you guys record your podcast yeah and we we're not big youtubers we're small guys we're very time constrained we've got jobs we've got families stuff like that and yeah. we've carved this time out dedicated so we can give you guys the content that you like yeah. and also the stuff that we like because we do like to talk about yeah. this and it makes our lives better but we can't just go like probably some big YouTubers. Oh, we'll just record it tomorrow then. Don't yeah. worry about it. And then we'll be able to cover this stuff. What's going to happen is this video comes out on Saturday, which is already two days, three days old. After the thing. And then yeah. next week on Thursday, we record it. And then it's, so it's going to be 12 days old by the time we get to it. This always happens to us though, which always. is that we will record the podcast and the next day something will come out. Yeah. Or we'll do something and the day of something comes out. And so what I've decided we're going to do is that we are going to make some outlandish predictions for what's going to be shown at this state of play okay. so we can immediately be disproved on Saturday when people watch this on the video. Great, great. That's the only way to do okay, this, yeah, okay? Yeah. And we are going to be streaming, but obviously you don't need to know that now because it will be in the past by the yes, time we do it. you'll have seen it, yeah. yeah. Um, so what do you think they're going to be showing at this state of play? You have a couple of random predictions. Okay. I've got some of my own if you want me to go first. Yeah, go first. So... God of War I gameplay. Do, I do want to see a teaser for God of War. And Horizon, I mean, both of those. Yes, both, both of them. We've got for the Horizon, we need to see proper extended gameplay. Yeah, yeah, we need 10 minutes of someone playing yes. the game, yeah, for sure. I want to see a brand new Thunderjaw level uh, yeah. thing, fight. I want to see that. Maybe the hint of another character, something to get you yeah, a bit yeah, teased, yeah. the villain, maybe something like that. A bit more of Hades, because that was a, the, the tease from the yeah. last game and whatnot. Um, but for God of War... Just tease a trailer, man. Even just a cinematic. Even, or if you if you want to illustrate something, some cool feature that's going to be in that game, like like the new weapon or something, like yeah. if there is a new weapon, like just the hint of like, I'm just going to do the Leviathan next pull because yeah. that's all I can think of. But just like, whoop, like that. Yeah, and then yeah. make people really excited. I mean, that would be cool as well. If I was d directing the teaser trailer yeah. and it went sort of my way where they go to a different region to like flee Thor, yeah. I'd have them like in a dark cave, like one of them's carrying like a fire stick or whatever they call yeah. it, torch. I knew that word. That's the word, that's the word. Not yeah. like a mag light, but like a flaming torch. <laughs> a torch that's just yeah. on fire, but like, strange. <laughs> I don't know why I need the fire, but <laughs> because it's producing light, but okay. <laughs> uh, that's pretty, that's a, that should be a t-shirt. Um, I'd have them like in like a, a cave sort of thing, like there's a cave in, they have to like dive and like create a set of chairs and stuff. And then they see Ooh. light up ahead and they start going through and it looks snowy and stuff. And then as you come out, you realize it's not snow, that was dust. And you come out of this cave and ahead you see like the pyramids. And then just fade, just cut. That would be a very big difference from the way that God of War 2018 was showing off. Yeah. Do you remember how that was showing off? What with the gameplay? Yes. Oh my god, by the way, that was so good. And that's, by the way, a level that we got, the gameplay that we got, that we, was the game they showed. We never heard of God of War before that. 
Yeah. Uh, God of War 2018. We yeah. never heard that before. We didn't that. even know it was in the works. And then they just came on the, the screen and they were like, we see Atreus playing around and stuff like that. We're like, who the fuck is this kid? We don't know this kid, anything like that. Look over to the door, silhouette. Boy. Didn't, didn't it start? They had a live orchestra, didn't they? Yes. It started in dark and we heard, boom, boom, boom. It was right when he, well, he said that you see the silhouette and you're like, people who know Kratos probably was like oh that's a muscly guy it could be Kratos but then he walks into the light and that's when it's like wham 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 it was and so ever- good oh my god I I got chills I forgot how good the sound is I'm gonna I'm not gonna play it I'm not gonna play it you should I want to it. I want go to but the problem it. the problem is even with 60 FPS and 4k and all that stuff I want the DS5 integration yeah. which is the thing that I'm hoping for which is when we get the next God of War that's going to bring in all the Leviathan Axe DS5 stuff and then they'll just port it over to I hope God of so War. because I, I hope the reason why they're keeping it right is because they want that surprise factor that's absolutely what and it totally makes sense to do it yeah I, but also only if the game is as good or better which can you imagine a game being better than god of war 4 well first how of insane all, would that be i couldn't imagine god of war being better than god of war and it was when i yeah, played yeah, it yeah, again yeah. do you know what you everyone out there i, I recommend this last time have a child have a child <laughs> then play the game yeah, just if, get her pregnant it's exactly, the age-old advice exactly and if you want to add even more to it you can kill your wife or kill your girlfriend right, right it'd be right. just like the game yeah yeah, yeah. Then uh, you, but instead of thought it'd be the police exactly the same, police base, same basic they've got idea. something on their hips yeah. so there's uh, and same you just run away idea. from them to yeah. egypt don't yeah. worry about it it's fine <laughs> i love how i just picked egypt because of the pyramids and, and like you know you got like different looking gods and now we're just saying it's Egypt. That's the thing. God of War Ragnarok also, in Egypt. Look, Even best though AC says, was in Egypt as well, wasn't it? It's true. AC Origins is the best one, actually, out of all of them. Yeah. Fact. Objectively. Objectively. Exactly. We've said it, so therefore it's true. It's true. You um, heard it on the internet. Also, we're saying Egypt, but even the teaser was like trying to tease like ice and wind and snow and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So we're far off here. We're maybe, very far bro, off. You don't know, maybe the skiing in Egypt is like really seasonally... What's, like, what's really funny is like at, th- th- right now it may be hot in Egypt and maybe the the historians think it was hot, but actually back then super ice, cold, yeah, super yeah. super cold. Yeah, yeah. it's just <laughs> Snow like everywhere. the pharaohs made the pyramids so all the heat was funneled up to their bedroom. <laughs> exactly, you know. <laughs> um, one other thing I want to see, yeah, and I'm sure you'll like to see this: Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Yeah, I'd like to see Proper some gameplay of that. Yeah, like ten minutes of gameplay. Someone play, someone that knows how to play games, playing yes. it like a suit. But someone just playing it i don't want to know the story mm-hmm. but maybe like um that first cutscene of oh no the like the evil wizard is outside the thing and then okay well let me go and collect all the strawberries whatever first mission it is yeah you know it's a t- tutorial mission well i guess not the tutorial we don't want to see a tutorial but you know what i mean you want to see something that's not going to be too spoilery yeah. but something that gets you an idea of what this world is like exactly and that one other I'm thing I'm excited for it, it does it does look really cool it, it seems so chill. yeah I was gonna say distressful I got, but that's not um, really a word <laughs> like Wind Waker vibes from it yeah like, kind of, not not any of the Zelda games are relaxing because there there is an element of like risk here and, mm. and stuff but overall the world is like you link you're on an adventure it's sunny and light and bright it's not the last of us it's something really right rare. exactly exactly um, one other thing that I think will will show up, but it's not like something I'm looking Smash forward Bros. to. Smash Bros. is like a new challenger has entered the... No, um, it's probably going to be the next installment of the Final Fantasy VII Remake franchise because they said they were breaking up into parts. Or the Final Fantasy VII Remake game. game. So they instead of making it all one game and remaking it, they said they were breaking up into parts. Okay, okay. I, I'm not a big fan of the franchise. I'm not, I didn't play the first one and one. I played the demo, that's about it. I played but, the original. But I think it's enough time has gone past that we can say, okay, Final the next Final Fantasy part, VII Remake Part 2. Yeah, something okay, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Which, don't you just love the naming of all these games that come out of Square? Even the Kingdom Especially Hearts Kingdom games. Hearts, yeah, yeah. It's just all of it so great. I would actually... I don't know if anyone else would though that's the thing a bit of me is like okay if they're remaking these games show the next installment to Final Fantasy 7 because like as you guys know we split up into two parts well the next part's coming and also and then you got like FF9 (laughs) right or something like we need to make it a drinking game every time Shep brings up Final Fantasy 9 (laughs) because I I would do it where it's like by the way guys we've got one final thing to show you it's only a few seconds long fade in from black and just have if anybody knows the uh, the main character Zidane um, has an airship 
I would literally show Zidane, because he also has a monkey tail, very common thing in Asian tropes. Obviously. Just show and a dude. Big animated is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I would literally just show a dude on the edge of a ship with like a monkey tail, zoom out, it's an airship, fade to black. Okay. And guys like me freak out because we know it's Final Fantasy VII. Everybody else doesn't oh. care. Right, but now I know Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy IX is being remade. Mm. Don't change anything. Just remake <laughs> it. Basically remaster it, but that's a huge remaster. Like you would have to remake it. You couldn't yeah. remaster it. But you know what I mean. Just redo the game and continue along this line because that section, I think, I think eight most people ignored, but like FF7, 9, and 10 are brilliant. Nine and nine's the obviously in my opinion the best. Ten's yeah. really good as well. Really good. Uh, honestly, the way that they it's just numbers added on to the end of them. It's just yeah. I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. You it don't just, like Fast and Furious? They just do you know what? Fuck? You don't like no. FF nine? No, Fast huh? and Fast huh? and Furious. At least they at least they switch it up to make confuse you a little bit. Yeah. They're like Fast and Furious one, too fast, too furious. For fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, Fast Four, Fast Five, uh, Fast uh, Fast and Furious Six, Fast Six, and it's yeah. like they just fuck with the name a lot. Too fast, too furious. <laughs> so fast, not furious enough. Not furious enough, unfortunately. Um. That's all the little predictions. It's yeah. only going to be a half an hour show anyway, so it's not like yeah. a big thing. With we can't game. get our full 10 minutes of gameplay for each of these games. Exactly. Though. No, everyone's going to have a half an hour of gameplay. Oh, that's just one thing then. Yeah. Um, mm. There is one thing that could be cool. All right. So, you know, we had the idea and hope that the PlayStation Plus collection gets changed every now and yes. again. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, possibly, they could announce some sort of new game coming to it, something coming off yeah, of it, yeah, or whatever yeah. it might be, and then it will get the ball rolling in expectations that this is going to be a changing yeah. service, and Mate, if they say, put it into the realm of competing with Game Pass. They will never do this, and I don't think they should, but if they want to kill, as if they haven't already killed Xbox, <laughs> but if they go show Kenner, and then they're like, oh, and by the way, PS Plus Collection is free. Day we give, day. We give, yeah, we're giving it to you. <laughs> PS Plus collection, you just need a PS5. Here it is. I was going to say... May 18th, 2021. Everyone says... Uh, or whatever. Like, the big thing with Game Pass is that you're going to get the, the, the Xbox exclusive games, yeah. of which there aren't many at the moment. At the moment. Hopefully um, there'll be more. Hopefully there'll be more. But they're like, you're going to get those day and date with Game Pass. That's the promise that they've made. Yeah. Um, and PlayStation have done it a couple of times with other games, not necessarily their own games, and not necessarily games that people care too much about. Yeah. They did it with... Um, in the beginning of the PS4's life cycle, they did with the Rezo Gun. They did um, the other oh, week. Oh, yeah, uh, the Rezo Gun. It was a good game as well, yeah. but it just wasn't like blowing anyone's skirts no. away. It was a great game. Uh, the Destruction All-Stars, the first time it came yeah. out, it went there. Um, Control Ultimate Edition, yeah, yeah. it was the first time it came yeah. out. It went straight on to a PS Plus collection. Stuff like that. And there are other games that I'm blanking on at the moment. Canterbridge of Spirits, I think it's in that area where it's like, it's not gonna sell bang bucks i don't think yeah but if playstation feel like they've been if generous after the enough first, like two months i could see it going on to i hope this is a good game and i hope it does all God, great for you guys good, yeah. yeah um but that that could be a good one the thing is i don't know anything about it it's true we've seen a little bit a little bit but i need to see like actual gameplay and have a basic idea of like what is the general idea? Like, oh no, the evil wizard stole the thing that keeps souls going to the the death plane. Yeah. And then like they're backing Hell, up. I'm... Yeah, like the, the bridge of spirits is, has been destroyed and all the spirits are backing up and that's not healthy for the world. You need to go and stop evil wizard. I think and... you might have nailed the actual story. Yeah, maybe. That sounds right. <laughs> that sound, sounds good, doesn't it? It's a good story. Well, anyway, uh, yeah. that's happening in a couple of hours and we'll see you guys there. We've probably already seen you there. Oh, which, yeah, wait, uh... this is coming up two days after. <laughs> Even the guys that get it tomorrow, it's going to be a day late. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's kick it over to our next PlayStation yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation have confirmed that they are working on the play PlayStation VR 2. We confirmed that like two years ago. I mean, that that's why you subscribe here, we guys. Spoke about, we, we spoke that. about that patent leak. Yeah two years ago and yeah. we called it then that this thing couldn't possibly come out because of the hardware requirements and yeah. then when we got the leak for the ps5 requirements which again was early and correct yeah we were like this thing could run it also that thing's a beast yes we should maybe link that video in the description because i can't yeah. remember all the stats to it but my god that psvr2 thing is going to be a 
for especially it looks the 3D like, audio. It looks oh my god, it's going to be so much better, right? Oh my god, in a 3D world with 3D audio, oh my it's going to be great. Let me read a little bit. So they they revealed it in a blog post. I have to say, I'm mixed feelings on this. Great, we're getting the announcement of a PlayStation yeah. VR two, but there's no. Um, Sorry, uh, I got a phone call here. Uh, there's no pictures. There's no release date. All except they're saying that it's not going to be in 2021. That's all they're saying. Good. There's no any information really, other than they said they've innovated with the controller. That's all they've said. Yeah, yeah. Because there was the, the haptic stuff. Oh my god! The Do you remember the tracking thing we, we were saying? We said the haptic technology would work really well. Yeah. But there's no way it's coming out. Then they mentioned that it's on the DS5. Yeah. We're so smart. We we got this down. I'm going to read a little bit of this blog post. This is a bit wordy and I'll, I'll cut it off at certain bits. I'm not going to read the beginning part, for example, but just bear with me for yeah, this yeah, bit. Yeah. But the blog post, it starts from the middle. It says, Today I'm pleased, to, I'm pleased to share with our next generation VR system that will be coming to the PlayStation 5, enabling the ultimate entertainment experience with dramatic leaps in performance and interactivity. Players will feel an even greater sense of presense and become even more immersed in the game worlds once they are put on the new headset. I do like reading from blog posts because they're very for, well formatted words. And yeah. Whatnot. Um, we looking at you, Discord comments. <laughs> looking at you, Summer Dylan, though, he does a great one. I love him. Um, we're continuing to innovate with our new VR system so that fans can continue to enjoy unique experiences that are synonymous with PlayStation. We're taking uh, what we learned from since PlayStation launching PlayStation VR, uh, the first one, on PS4 to develop a next-gen PSVR system that enhances everything from resolution, field of view, to tracking and input. It will connect to the PS5 with a single cord... Okay. which is amazing. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, and improve ease of use while enabling high-fidelity visual experience. One of the innovations we're excited about is the new VR controller, which will incorporate some of the key features found in the DualSense wireless controller, along with focus uh, a focus on great ergonomics. Uh, that's just one of the examples of future-proofing technology we're developing to match our vision for the whole of the ge new generation of VR games and experiences. And they talk a little bit about some other stuff. They'll say that it, so it won't be launching in 2021, but we'll provide early update for fans. Blah, blah, blah. Now, there's two things I want to say about this. Yeah. One... This is very clearly so they can get investors excited and invest yeah. into PlayStation. Yeah. It's a very business move. Yeah. We get that. That's why there's no pictures as well. But also, too, I just got word today that apparently PSVR 2 dev kits have gone out to developers. Sick. And I think they wanted to get ahead of the curve and so people don't go... So it's not a leak. Exactly. So it's not a leak and say, yes, Although we're actually doing it. The leaks did really well for them leading up to this, though. True. True. I will say for me the biggest thing there and then they went on to to kind of touch on it was you know said increases in like uh, you know audio qualities field Fidelity of view and volume. input yes and i think that similar to the ds5 that's going to be a hidden gem that people aren't going to really no one still no one's talking about how insane it is it's just not making it there mm. and it is it's so good for immersion and i think it's just so good that you forget how much better it was than the it's like it's a good movie soundtrack yeah you forget how good the ds5 is because you're using it and enjoying it so much mm -hmm. but man is it a step up from last gen and i think um the input for this psvr 2 could just be instead i think again we we'll also get overlooked by just how good the screen is mm -hmm. how good the field of view is how good the 3d audio is and you'll forget that like actually yeah that haptic mm. feedback where you're like picking something up and you feel the the mug stuff mm -hmm. like that we have no idea what it'll actually look like. We didn't get design links for the PSV2. We saw some. Just the head right? It was it? like we, we saw some for the controller. Glove. It was like a yeah. It's like a strap around the back, and yeah, it was like yeah. a stick in your hand. But also had these like things that it can detect whether you're using yeah. each one of your fingers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that one did have a light bulb at the top of it, a bit like the PlayStation the has it I now. Assume, yeah. But I don't think it's actually going to use light tracking in this one. Okay. So God knows that could have just been an iteration yeah. that they've worked on since yeah, yeah. then and whatnot. But. Anyway, there was, and also they don't always need to make every pattern that comes out. They could just pattern it and then go, actually, we're not going to go that way. We're yeah, go they've done way. that a few times. I, so a couple of things. The single cord to the PS5. Yeah. Unbelievably amazing. I love them for that because I haven't pulled out my uh, 
PlayStation VR headset since I got the PS5. Right. Even though there has been some games that have said, oh, we've upped the resolution, we've upped the uh, the frame rate and whatnot. It's way, way smoother because of the power of the PS5. You guys should go try it out again. And I want to because it would be amazing. It's just such a hassle to set up. Yeah. Plug it in the back of the PS4, plug it in the front of the PS4. Then you've got the co-processor unit. It's got its own power unit. Two cables in the back, two cables in the front, uh, and then a, a USB cable that goes out yeah. of it. And then you need to set up the, the camera. And it's like, oh, just... I, I can't I can't take this. Yeah, it's a set up once and never touch it again exactly. for the generation. Yeah. But I don't have the setup anymore to do that kind of no, thing yeah, like yeah. that. I don't have the... I can't have wires everywhere. Also, sometimes you're moving your PS5. True. Sometimes I want to take it downstairs to the OLED. Yeah. Um, so having one cord, and if it's got some sort of tracking on the headset rather than a, a camera looking at you, could be really awesome. And then it, de I don't see it deletes that as that's well. That's the thing that I don't see them getting away from you needing the camera. It's possible. It could be a, a really big dream. But there is a way. I mean, if you used to put two, you know, like how. Um, you know how you do AR technology, like on your mm -hmm, phone mm -hmm. or something like that? It tracks by cameras yeah. and it tracks the outside. Yeah. If it could do something like that and it tracks the outside and then it goes, oh, oh you, you move think your head to the left. You think the, the right. PSVR 2 has the cameras on it and it's altered reality but fed into VR perception. Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. And I I'm thinking that. like that's how it knows which way you're looking because that screen is now there and now it's moved over here. So you must have moved your head over that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how it figures it out. That may just be a dream. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a technologist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, so uh, that might be something. But I like the idea of a PSVR 2 coming out there. By the sounds of the PSVR 2 from the leak that we saw a couple years ago and stuff like that and what we think it will be, I'm starting to think that, and I don't know if I'll get one, I'm not sure if VR's for me yet. It's always been in that stage where it's like, this could be amazing, guys. You might want to get in or hop on this train. But I think the PSVR 2 is the start of that. Yeah. I, I suspect if the PSVR 2 is as good as like, you know how the DS5 yeah. it just blew us out the water. If it's that kind of good for VR, I could see it being the start of VR adoption. Mm. The only problem with VR, and this, I really mean it, is the only problem with VR, other than like making you seasick if you're doing racing games and stuff. Um, is not everybody has the space. Like yeah. a lot of people, it's just set up in their living room and they sit on the sofa and play games, right? They don't have the space to like, like even this this whole room, like your spare room, which we use for the office. Whoops. Um, I bet you would easily knock over half the stuff on the shelves and step I've, on stuff. And... I've hurt myself many times playing Beat Saber in this place. Well, we've, <laughs> we used to play Beat Saber up here before it was the office. Yeah. Like a, on poker nights and stuff. And even then, like having one person playing and then a couple of dudes like just hanging out making fun mm. of the guy playing like Dude is dickhead. right like how many times did we nearly get punched in the face yeah. everybody multiple times i think a few of us have been hitting the nuts and stuff <laughs> yeah. like because they, and this is i mean it's not a small room it's not a large room but it's yeah. not small like this could be somebody's bedroom just so you know that time you got hit in the nuts did that on purpose yeah well i, I mean, could see everything i was just yeah, like yeah, yeah, fuck it <laughs> sorry about this i'm dying from heat so i'm gonna open up the window go for it man <laughs> but i think that's loud i think one of the things about vr is even um the the best things are good but they're they require like two grand you need like a 1500 dollars gaming rig minimum and 500 dollars for the headset right yeah. or, or pounds whatever you want euros whatever but with the psvr2 making things a bit more achievable once scalpers stop doing their thing and it comes in yeah the price point's low enough and the product could be good enough that enough people start to adopt it that enough of these game houses dev houses make enough good products because also vr's lacking not that the stuff on vr isn't good beat sabers are a ton of fun all sorts of stuff is really good fun mm. but they're not they're b movies yeah, it's like we haven't got the... The B-movies competing with AAA titles, you know what I mean? I was going to say, we haven't got the... And I granted, I don't think it'll be fitting for VR because you can't wear the headset for that long. Yeah. But we haven't got the 80-hour RPG like The Witcher or something right. like that, that to put on the headset. That killer, killer game that everybody must have. Yeah. We thought that maybe Half-Life Alex would be that because... <gasps> it, But it hasn't come to any other system. So it's like, it's limited to one thing and that stifles creativity and sales. Ghost of Tsushima. Those jewels, those jewels. That could be the thing. <laughs> oh my god! A anyway, you just need to put Ghost of Tsushima on something, and Sheps will buy it. <laughs> I think Ghost of Tsushima, Monica Dambo. Yes, <laughs> do you know there's an anime called Afro Samurai, and I think Samuel L. Jackson voices the guy. No Pretty way! Certain, yeah, 
Damn. It's also pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, all right. Um, I, uh, I'm totally in an anime mood now. I forgot what we said. VR, I think VR, I don't know if VR will ever be like just the way people game because like you say, I think it's a bit much to play. I w don't see Wames doing a 15 hour Kingdom Hearts stream in VR. Yeah. It's just a bit more taxing on you than playing. Yeah. Um, but I could see it becoming like the number two way people do gaming, you know, instead of mobile. Yeah. I could see it being like regular gaming, VR, mobile. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that it gets that way because I could see some incredible stories being told in this format. But what we really need is um, something like the PSVR 2 where it's once stock comes in for the PlayStations. Like it's relatively low barrier to mm -hmm. entry and then a couple of just insane titles where people are like, have you played God of War? You've got to play God of War, right? Have you played The Witcher? You've got to play The mm -hmm. Witcher 3. Some games that you have to, have to, have to play and then anyone that plays them, they become an advocate. Like, oh my God, you got yeah. like, oh, you've got a PlayStation and it's like five years in. Well, a PSVR, the VR2 is like 200. You, dude, you got to try it yeah. for 200. You, you got to do this, man. It's so worth Word it. Word of mouth sells better than any sort of like PR or anything yeah. like that. Um, there was one thing about, uh, about the stock thing that you mentioned yeah. that came to my head. Maybe God of War as well releasing in 2021 might not happen. They haven't like reaff properly affirmed Needs that day. Needs to be next year only. I was going to say, if be. it is Has next gen only, which I hope it is because be. it will just be the full fledged, full curry, full vindaloo thing, yeah, yeah. Um, then mm. it might be better to move it to 2022 when the supply constraints are less and also when all these scalpers have all been yeah. hung from, from trees and stuff like that. Hopefully. Um, that's what that might be another reason as well to delay it although yeah. they haven't said whether or not it's going to be for ps4 and ps5 and i feel like they might have touted that already if it was going to be a if it was going to be a thing but then again they've done the games where they've like oh it's going to come for ps5 and yeah. they go actually as well we're going to bring out of ps4 so. last two gamer we had james on and yes. he made a really good point about the backwards compatibility of stuff yeah which i think is a good point i'm not really too bothered about backwards compatibility yeah I want to see stuff. I don't mind stuff being on next gen only. Yeah. And this is someone that I was, if it hadn't been for you, I'd still only have a PS4. Yeah. And I would still be saying, cause I was saying when I only had a PS4 and you had a PS5, this can't come on to current gen. It shouldn't be, Yeah. you know? So I feel like I can reasonably say like, it needs to be next gen only. It's important that it's next gen only because as we've seen with cyberpunk, it just can't tell the story properly. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just got, not going to be enough. I'm so keen to play the next God of War. I want it to be the best thing it can possibly be. Yeah, yeah, it's got to put its best foot forward. Yeah. Also, because more games like that do a few things. They raise the bar for the industry. Yeah. Right. They they. Well, hopefully, like The Witcher, unfortunately, set out a, a course for Assassin's Creed that hasn't <laughs> paid off. But in general. Games like God of War raise the bar and people go, well, look, if we're going to tell a story, it needs to be like this. What the, yeah. what made this story so good? You, you have these incredible studies to dissect. Yeah. Um, but also, and this is the thing that I'm hoping for, and we said this on The Last True Gamer with uh, Wames Jelford, yes. the least talented of the Jelford brothers. Exactly. Um, that what Xbox needs to compete is to stop doing what it's been doing they need some standalone first party titles they need to be new i don't for the record i don't think fable is enough i don't feel like it is if it's if it's the best fable that's ever come out it'll be enough to get me to buy one yeah to buy an xbox and to play it but i don't think it's enough to stem the bleeding it doesn't say oh play, who are playstation right. God, God. Right, right. The xbox are it the will guys. Be, it will be insane yeah it will be on the level of a god of war 4 if it's the best fable they've made it will yeah. be on that level totally different kind of game they don't it's apples to oranges but my god is fable good but what they need is some standalone rpgs yeah story character character driven story focused rpgs and i'm hoping that games like god of war coming out someone at Microsoft is going to say, guys, why haven't we done one of these? Right? And hopefully that means we get some incredible journey. I don't know what it is. I don't know. But I want to see something insanely good with this incredible story come out from Xbox and be jealous that the only way to play it, Frick Game Pass, Frick playing on PC, the only way to play it is to buy an Xbox and to play yeah. it on, on that, right? At least for the first two years. That's the way it needs to happen. I hope that games like Horizon coming out and hopefully being good, yeah. God of War coming out and being good, um, T 
tip someone off somehow they haven't figured out yet someone goes we need some games like that yeah and then like uh ghost of shima did it perfectly right brand new title not nothing no groundwork for this title yeah. right and a dev house that has really should never have got that job yeah right they did, it wasn't in their wheelhouse to do it and they made this incredible standalone someone at microsoft has to go we've developed we've got all these um companies we have all this money with all this time let's not worry about ruining halo let's just make something brand new mm. and our priority needs to be an incredible story driven character focused rpg let's just make one they have got the wrong idea i feel like they, they the problem is is that it's gone on for too long since the beginning of the xbox one yeah uh, since then they've been trying to pull the ship together so they can try and bring something out that goes actually they are still relevant actually yeah. we do still do something over here and now they've got to the point where they're like we just need to buy someone who makes good things or who has a good thing coming yeah, yeah. and then put that out because that's it's been way too long they if they were to start from today for example and go okay we're going to make a brand new thing guys come out that's gonna be five years before that comes out they're going to be this playstation will have put well, out six or seven exclusives that in their is, normal quality that ruins everything i agree if that's the timeline mm -hmm. but because they do own all of those companies i think it's probably harder to do this than it is in my head, but I can see a world where they hire us on mm. and we say, okay, here's the plan. And we go to Bethesda and all these different companies. We say, okay, we need um, like your team of, we need five of you or of your highly skilled coders. And then we need two people that are, don't fit in. They're like super creative. They always have a problem with the ideas that you're doing. They always bring up issues. And then like your most, your guy that has been your most consistent creative from each one of these companies, get them all together. Okay, what's the idea? We all brainstorm roughly the idea. Mm. And then that group of people who are ideally like, not exactly misfits. I don't want people that are shit. Yeah. But like the people that don't fit in with the rigid, like this is the way we do things at Microsoft. They're more creative types. Right. Yeah. Those guys and we now become um, Microsoft and studios mm. and we make the, the first thing and we're allowed to pull resources from other things unfortunately you see that's the thing they the thing that microsoft have is tons of money they yeah. don't unfortunately have the creativity we need the seems. time the time is the problem and that's yeah. why they, need they don't us. have and they also don't have time as well it's been it's gone for too long the thrust needs to happen now and unfortunately i don't think it's but that's what i'm saying soon. is like you take you're Microsoft and you say, okay, look, we can override all these individual companies at some level. We're going to take the engine from here. We're going to take the world from there. You just guys, you guys need to change it from like flatland to, to mountains or whatever. Mm. The story is going to be this. Develop the assets only for that. We'll mocap. We'll get the actors. This is the story. We got to make it go. And then you can go from five years to two with recycled stuff. I think that gets too... You see, when you when you do recycle stuff, I think it, it compromises. That's the thing. I, I just think it's gone too far. It's a, I, it's I, a, it is I a always have something, some, something to say, unfortunately. Me pitching... Like no, much. I agree with you. This is me pitching... Like, we're... we're um, we've been... In this scenario, we've been brought on by Microsoft to fix this problem or yeah. Xbox. And here's the pitch. Yeah, we're compromising because we. what you said is the real thing is five years down the road. We don't have five years, but we can yeah. maybe do it in two. To get a game out in two... We would have to compromise on like a lot of the it, it won't be all brand new assets it won't be yeah but we can get a game out um game they don't have to be perfect how many games have you played He's, look you played minecraft last night the thing is that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to I mean, not, i'm sorry not, to be the devil's advocate all the time yeah, well, not yeah. devil's advocate but the, no, 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 to yeah. be the guy that always opposes you in this oh you're gonna be mr order. negative yeah i, I don't know. like it when other people are negative <laughs> No, I feel I, you. I'm just saying, like, I how could we like fit? They can't go for mediocre. They can't go for okay. They can't go for, you know, that wasn't too bad. They have to go for banger. Otherwise, it's just like you know every what? other game on Game Pass where they're just seven out of tens all the time. Do you know what the thing is I was just thinking? Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima was an absolute banger in every way, visually and storytelling yeah. and all that stuff. And so actually, yeah, trying to compete with the Ghost of Tsushima as a brand new title with hell of a task yeah without really having that the quality in the assets may not yeah I'm, i was just thinking how would you get it done quickly yeah exactly i know what you mean but yeah unfortunately quickly doesn't work out and also 
the time we don't have the time like you said because we need to yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a really shit situation yeah, really. and I honestly they, they I think they saw that and they were like we just need to buy people because what do we have we have money we don't have yeah. brains but we have money here so let's just buy someone to do it and they bought Bethesda That's and they're the hoping to get something out of it trying to buy uh, trying to buy a dev house that hopefully already has something in the works exactly yeah. and they're just sitting there with their fingers crossed like, yeah. oh see what happens um before we move on from PlayStation talk, I want to read out a few of the uh, the comments that people left over on our Discord server, just like you guys can, by clicking the link in the description. Best place in the world to be. That's right. Um, well, I'm going to read out real the real Diogo. Read part of his comment. Oh, Diogo has a comment, does he? Strange Diogo. He never writes in this guy. He goes... God of War, it's not coming out this year at all. That's just a PR stunt to get people to get the PS5 quicker, which is possible as yeah. well. They could have done that. They announced it one year before its release and showed no gameplay or anything, whereas God of War 2018, they announced it in 2016 E3 with all the trailer and the gameplay. Uh, assuming it uses the same engine, that would have started shortly after, and they started developing shortly after release. Uh, I find it hard that it's going to... Sorry, I missed that sentence. I find it hard that it's coming out this year and they've shown nothing for it, let alone speak about it. It's going to be mid to late 2022, I reckon. I agree. That's a good good prediction right there. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, let me see the next one. Uh, Summer Dylan as well. He writes out uh, his first paragraph here. Very nice paragraph. I like it. He goes, uh, I really don't think God of War Ragnarok is coming out this year uh, since Hogwarts Legacy is delayed and my most two anticipated games for 2021 are Horizon Forbidden West and Far Cry 6, he says. Um, um, D, do you want to read D's one? Can you see it there? Yeah, I can do that. You know, you, you skipped Jack. Did I? Did he? What did he say anything about? I don't think he said anything about God of War. That, I'm just trying oh, to read okay. out the God of War part. So oh, okay. If you okay. read that first section of his one. Gotcha, I'm with you. Um, D says, I think that the game will get delayed because three years of de development sounds like too little time to me, mm. even if you do reuse assets. As for the plot and stuff, I think that Kratos will die in this one, and Atreus will be the next protagonist in the series. I think we're using the. I think we can cut it down to three because the reason the game took five years in the beginning was create was two years to create the assets, create the assets, and create the entire world. Right, you've got the world now. Yeah. Granted, they could be going somewhere else, so they have to redo all of that but again. It's just kind of a reskin, though, isn't it? It's not exactly huge. as as shit as that sounds. Yeah. It's not really what we mean, like shitty way. It's it's still going to be put a different coat of paint yeah. on it. You you mentioned this about potentially Kratos dying and Atreus being the next protagonist. I have no connection whatsoever with Atreus in that way. I'm not it's possible that if if at the end of this game he we could have like an Ellie scenario where like you know Ellie picks up the torch and it could be good, but definitely not he can't be the protagonist for this game. Mm. At least if we end up playing as him, Kratos will need to die two thirds of the way in can't be before that I just I, I, I want to play as Kratos at least for right now yeah. you know whereas like for example with The Last of Us I wanted to play in the world of love, of The Last of Us with Joel and Ellie I didn't really it doesn't matter if I'm playing as Ellie mm -hmm. I just assumed they would both be here you know yeah I can't I can't I can't envision the game even though there's that mural thing on the wall mm. and, and also Kratos does say that he would give up his life for, for Atreus if, if need like be. feels like the end though, doesn't it? Yeah. It's the end. And we, the thing is, we don't know if this is going to be a trilogy or if this is going to be just two games. True. That's the issue as well. That's a trilogy. It does feel like they could make a trilogy out of it, right? A trilogy is nice as well. It's three trilogy, games. Yeah, three seems to work well. Like um, there's this human thing, but we like threes for some reason. I don't yeah. know why. Um, I think it's because like if the first one's good then it's like I'm really excited for this thing you yeah. get the next one you're like cool give me a little bit more at least okay it's like a three course meal isn't it right. whereas like if you go this is really cool and then the next one that's it yeah you're like, although oh. they did it with The Last of Us true true. Well, so it could also go on we don't know what I feel Spoilers. like um, <laughs> I feel like I it would Neil Druckmann yesterday he said there's the third one coming it would work for a trilogy but it would also be fine to wrap it up now yeah as long as they make the story good, I don't. I would rather have two games and it be great than yeah. three games that are okay. Overall, you know. Also, there's the power fantasy as well that you go from playing Kratos, and then if Atreus ha doesn't become a super god with amazing yeah. powers or something like that, then it's like that's a fair step down. How do you translate that? How do you sell yeah. that? And also, if he isn't, if he's more powerful than Kratos, which is fine, I can mm -hmm. understand that. Um, then you kind of have this Dragon Ball Z 
thing, which yeah. is that if you sneeze while you're powering up, you accidentally just destroy a planet because you're because <laughs> you're that powerful now. You know, he he gets too powerful, uh. and and well, it's a Superman problem. Is that if if there's no if he can just destroy everyone that's in his way, yeah. then there's no fun to fighting the anyone. I you know, you. so I, it's a tough. I'd one. rather have I'd rather have two great games than three mediocre games mm. uh, or three great games would be ideal would be ideal it would be uh, Corey, more, more that's amazing is better than less that's, that's amazing <laughs> so you know Gamer Lad writes in and uh, part of his comment says here as for God of War Ragnarok no way in hell is it coming out this year story wise I think Atreus will get kidnapped by Thor at the beginning Big of the brain, game, what did I say? It's a good one. It's a good one. As he appears in the post credit scene, and the goal of Kratos is to rescue him and butcher as many gods uh, as possible who stand in his way. That could be a good, compelling story. Although I don't, I wouldn't want to be away from Atreus for the entire thing. Maybe the beginning section. I think that's why you do your flashbacks. Yeah. So I think. So I said the basically the same thing is that Thor arrives and for some reasons manages to split them up, right, mm. and sends. Um, Kratos somewhere else. Yeah. And in my case, I said Egypt, right? And then he has to kill his way through it. And that while he's doing that, he this is where he, he comes into contact with like a god that says a thing or like does an illusion and he remembers like his wife that passed right. away. And then he goes and fights this guy and that guy has a kid and that gives him a flashback to when he showed Atreus the thing, mm. you know? I would, do, I would do it like that. And then also cut to Atreus, where we would play as Atreus, trying to escape from Thor or fighting back but having being totally outmatched right and that's where we get the um yeah atreus is a cool character right like yeah. he, he's great uh and then in the third game that's where we get the passing of the torch but we do we would also end the saga right right that's how i would do it he also says i hope we get to go to asgard which if he's being held be by sick. by thor going to could you imagine kratos knocking on the doors of asgard and like Aah! odin shaking in his boots or whatever I was like, oh my god what is going on? that could be really i definitely really cool. love the idea of of like saying oh you know uh, odin and thor like uh, that the you know, kratos is here and they're like don't worry the guy, the gates of asgard have held for a thousand what was that <laughs> like no, 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 you don't understand. That's Kratos outside. Never once yeah. has an enemy cut a breach star star right, gate. Right, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. Um, do you want to read Juicy Spice Wars, the beginning part yeah, there? Yeah, buddy. Uh, he says, I think it will be delayed. And I think it will be the final God of War, ga God of War game. Mm. Considering that Kratos is prophesied to die at the end of Ragnarok, according to God of War lore, if not, Atreus will be the protagonist going forward. I, th I think die or not i think that's the end mm. and so that has to happen whenever that happens that'll be the end of the franchise right or in the final game yeah. that doesn't mean it has to be in the next game if it's not called ragnarok and we don't get ragnarok mm. then that happens in the sixth game yeah. right like I agree, and we presume it's called Ragnarok, and we have seen some art saying that it's Ragnarok, and we've seen one promo thing saying it's Ragnarok, but then Corey Balrog goes and says, oh, I've never heard that name. Yeah. But again, he could just have not slept for two days. He also did do that tweet as well, where it's uh, all Ragnarok. the things where Ragnarok is yeah. coming. I was like, ah, right, come on, man. Give us some give us some solid information, yeah, goddammit. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. And I think that might be all the comments regarding yeah. God of War. Yeah, that's everything there. Thanks a lot, everybody, for writing in for that. Uh, it actually turned out to be the exact conversation yeah. that I was hoping it would be. It was good. really, really good right there. Should we finish up these comments? Because we have another podcast to record after this. We do have another podcast. The True podcast. Gamer podcast that you can get access to for as little as a dollar a month over on patreon.com forward slash conversations. God, that I think you said I think you said True Gamer podcast there. The Conversations podcast over on patreon.com forward slash conversations for as little as a dollar a month. <laughs> <laughs> which, by the way, as well, if you're watching this on Saturday, tomorrow, on Sunday, we're doing an all-day stream and whatnot, which you guys can yeah. join us. going to be great fun playing all kinds of games with you guys. Um, let me just wrap up a few little topics that okay. will also, come, also came up in yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, Days Gone is coming to PC in the spring mm -hmm. um, I think that's really cool I don't mind games coming from like PlayStation Studio games moving over to PC after a certain amount of yeah, time it's been like three years or something exactly two years, two years yeah and it's that's just, fine. It's just more people to play things. And more money to the developers to make more great games. Exactly. Yeah. They're coming out with a two. We do know that's happening. So this is just fun, the development of that. Yeah, ideally, those, assuming there was no stock issues with PS5, mm. if those guys played the game, like, man, this is good. I don't want to wait two years to play the next one. And they go. buy a PS5. 
And that is why Game Pass is not pro-consumer, because you just get these things for a low price. You, there's no incentive to go to Xbox. There's no incentive to give more money to Xbox. It's yeah. just like, well, I'll buy it for one month or whatever or something like yeah. that, and that's good enough. And no reason to buy an Xbox. Um, also, uh, there is one thing that I'm salty about, though. Okay, okay. So they announced what it's going to be like and what the improvements are yeah, going to be like yeah. on PC, and it's got some things that are pretty much only PC stuff, like ultra-wide monitor support, okay. uh, so FOV sliders and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But they also said that there's going to be improved visuals, like graphics and stuff okay. like that, and textures. And recently they did a, a PS5 patch update and all they did was add 60 FPS mode to it. Okay. They could have easily added those textures that they've done for PC to add those to the PS5. Yeah. And that's your console. That's your, your exclusive console. Your bread and butter, yeah. You should have, they should have given us something, right? I mean... I, I was a little bit salty about that. A little yeah, bit salty about I can that. see it. I can also see the other side of this coin, which is the game looks the way it looks, giving it extra FPS and the, the incentive for people on PC to play a console game is the... Cause PC idiots all about oh my graphics mm. I can pl I play uh, Minecraft in 8K mm. I, I, don't, I don't care about the story I don't care about it being right. a good game I just want FPS 1000 FPS 1000 yeah. FPS at 8K mm. for That's Minecraft all I care about for Minesweeper huh? mm. is it my own Minesweeper Pro is oh, yeah. about, uh, and Pimble anyway um, yeah, PC peasants um <laughs> Uh, as well as that, oh, Jesus Christ, I've got one point here that I think has been deleted and I, I've been trying to control Z it, but I can't. It says apparently there, oh, and that's it. No. I don't know what the fuck it was. Anyway, um, Henry Cavill tweeted out a picture the other day yeah. of him getting dressed for uh, The Witcher 2, yeah. Yeah, uh, season yeah, yeah. two, and he had a script in his hand and he tweeted out saying, working on a super secret project here, uh, nothing to do with the makeup but yeah, just what's yeah. in, in the book there but it was really blurry and you couldn't see what it was I took to Twitter and I was squinting and praying and hoping yeah, yeah, yeah. and I could have sworn I saw Clark mention I could have sworn I saw Smallville there right, right. and I was like could this be something Superman related yes we're gonna get something Superman related and then some geniuses on the internet went and deblurred it with some amazing technologies yeah. and whatnot. And it turns out that he is working on a Mass Effect project, yep. which killed me, but obviously makes you pretty happy, right? You will be happy by the end of March because you'll have played the Legendary Edition. Very true. And you will hopefully have a lot of, well, actually, no, you, I say that, but then they took out all of Miranda's art shots. Ah, uh, it's, it's basically not The not game's dead it. to me now. It's dead, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I think I think you'll enjoy it. I do. I think you'll really enjoy those games. If I enjoy it, yeah. there's a good chance that I'll ultra fandom it because I hope you do. I'm a big uh, Henry Cavill is one of my greatest celebrity crushes as well as yeah, like of big course, fan. Yeah. I'm a big fan of all of his work, everything he's done, and he seems like a genuinely nice guy. So him being involved in the project and just being introduced into this franchise, this could be set up perfectly for me. It could be really good. It's also one of the, in my opinion, it's one of the better sci-fi things that's out there. Yeah, and um. You know, I feel like we get a lot of sci-fi, but we really don't. You get Star Wars and Star Trek, and then yeah. really there's not it's slim pickings. I mean... It's, it's just, set in space, but it's still just human shit going on. Right, it's not really sci-fi, and this yeah. is like proper, you know, good sci-fi. Um, there's other stuff, like The Expanse is brilliant on Amazon yeah. Prime. But my point, there's not, there's not a huge amount now, and the last good thing other than The Expanse was like Battlestar Galactica, it's 2004. Yeah. Still brilliant, by the way, if you haven't watched, seriously, if you haven't watched, it's great. But, um... If they give this the Henry Cavill budget, yeah, because they were like, we got a big name, we got to put all our shit behind it. Could you imagine how great this movie? The could only be? problem is, I just like Henry Cavill. For example, The Witcher, he's still too way too big to be The Witcher. The Witcher, Geralt's supposed to be more like motherfucker's like, yoked. He's, he's like <laughs> Geralt, Geralt looks more like um, Nikolai Waldo Kant or whatever his name is. The the guy that plays Jamie Lannister, the one that we said to play Joel, but they yeah. didn't pick him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, like. That's what The Witcher looks like. He's a swordsman. He travels a lot. He doesn't have like eight hours a day to spend in the gym pumping iron. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Henry Cavill's brilliant as Geralt, but but he, he just doesn't exactly look perfect yeah. for her. He's just too big. Um, and I sort of have that worry for Commander Shepard as well. But Henry Cavill's brilliant. Every, he's playing everyone at the minute. I hope he gets to play. He's going to play Miranda as well. Yeah, he's going to bring Miranda. back the arse shots. Exactly. I mean, right? His arse was perfect as well. It looks yeah. like it was genetically engineered to be perfect. Exactly. So I, I, Henry Cavill should play everything. Okay. I agree. In the next Spider-Man movie, he should play as Tom Holland. He should uh, play as Tom Holland yeah. playing. Peter Parker playing Spider-Man. Exactly. I he agree. should play MJ as well. Z Z Zaydana. Z Z Z Zinedine, I know her. Zinedine. <laughs> That's the, I don't know the one you mean. Yeah, her. Yeah, uh, you should play her as well. All of the characters because he's just the best. 
Zaya. Zendaya? Zendaya. Zendaya, that's yeah. it. That's the name we, it was something like it was bound to get it, guys. We got it in the first try. Um, yeah, he should play everyone. He's just fantastic. I totally agree. Um, <laughs> two bits of bad news for gamers. Great. These are the last two things to talk about. Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> yeah. Patch 1.2 that was supposed to come out in February has been delayed. How can you delay a patch? That's, oh my, do you know what? This is, oh my God. Like it couldn't get any worse with Cyberpunk and CDPR. They I'm, blame the hack that they got that but that they were that you know the it they recovered everything recently. yeah but yeah they recovered everything but i guess they had to work on the security but guarantee then again, they hacked themselves i was gonna say the devs don't do that the they devs just a, carry on with their thing right. over there and they left a really silly note so i could be imagine it was them doing it themselves <laughs> this is how hackers talk right um uh, what's I the feel hacker like, language is how, is i feel like thing? cyberpunk is now like i'm not disappointed i'm not angry it's now just a meme i do think in six months to a year it will be a really good game mm. but whatever don't care yeah i i'm not invested in it in the way i was a couple months ago no no the, the one bad thing that they didn't do is they didn't announce this in a big ball, wall of yellow text yeah they, the, yellow, the big yellow yeah, wall yeah. with the black text they just made an it. announcement they just did a normal tweet and i was like you guys missed come on man the one yeah. thing that we can at least Got laugh about good branding yeah <laughs> so t- anyway that's been delayed to the later half of march i think what they need to do is stop putting fucking dates on anything yes and just work on the game We're working on a patch when's it coming out hopefully soon we're not 100 percent sure we need it to be right i was gonna say gamers we don't care about the game anymore yeah. people the, the hype for this game is literally at zero it got battlefront tooed exactly yeah. Um, so no one cares about this game. So when you bring something out, that would be great. But you don't put a date on anything and just just work. Just do what you yeah, gotta just do. Do the work, get it done. Yeah. Anyway, that's the what's happening there. And the final bit of uh, I was gonna say bad news, but news. do we care? Uh, Anthem is officially dead. We spoke about it in the last episode. Question. Yes. Anthem. Or Anthem Next that was just released. Anthem. Well, so it wasn't released. Anthem uh, Next is the project they were working on. Yeah, yeah. So the way it announced. works. Yeah, the way it was working was that Anthem came out, did terribly, had no content. They said they're going to put it into, they're going to go behind the curtains of work. And then they go, we're working on our project. We're calling it Anthem Next. And yeah. when it comes out, it'll be the big thing that will revive the whole game. Was, and Was Anthem Next supposed to be Anthem Two. No, it was supposed to be just the revival of Anthem again. Like No Man's Sky, what happened to that? Essentially, okay, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and what's really upsetting is that they kind of threw away Mass Effect Andromeda. Like, they took their hands off of Mass Effect Andromeda. They're like, we're not going to do anything else with it. It's shit, whatever it is, just leave it there. Yeah. We're going to focus on Anthem and make it amazing because it's our brand new IP and it could be amazing. And uh, last week we said that EA were going to meet up with them. They were going to pitch their proposal for more people. 200 extra devs. Exactly. And And all this money and all this time. And it looks like that didn't go well for them. Really? Yeah, apparently they were not impressed. And Anthem has officially ceased any sort of updates, anything. Nothing's going to happen. The game can officially run for a little bit longer. They haven't put an end date on that. But there will be no content updates. And Anthem is officially dead. Our worst fears have been confirmed. When I say our worst fears, did anybody give a crap about this? At I all? love the idea because you said this about like um, they took their hands off Andromeda. Uh, Andromeda is largely agreed to be very poor, but things like um, the graphics for it aren't that great. Yeah, like like I don't know if you saw any of the memes that came up, but like they compared to the uh, I think two thousand seven two thousand eight was the Mass Effect three. Yeah, and Andromeda came out what four years ago. Yeah, and they were like they look basically the same. In fact, <laughs> in a lot of the things, the uh, Andromeda things looked worse. The dialogue was really flat, uh, didn't make any sense. Like um, I just googled some images of it, and it's not exactly ideal. Well, this is the thing. A lot of people were excited about the next installment of Andromeda, uh, sorry, Mass Effect that they teased, and I'm like. Why? Why? They made Mass Effect Andromeda, they made Anthem, they made the last um, Shadow of Mordor uh, game, which yeah. was awful and whatnot. Bioware seem like they're done. Bioware seem like they've lost the magic that they had. Oh yeah, I agree. Why does it, Why is anyone excited? You shouldn't be excited for this next game. I don't know what's going on. It feels like they had people uh, in the right positions that were passionate, and then it became a job yeah and now they're just trying to get that paycheck yes which don't get me wrong that happens to everyone like I, I i get it but um it feels like the passion and the interest has gone yeah like you mentioned god of war 
we spent like an hour just freaking throwing throwing ideas out at each other and seeing what happens oh what if you did this or what about that and n- at no point we were like that's shit we were like oh my god that could work but what if yeah. you did this or that and this right because we because we care about it and i feel like at every level for like the newer stuff just no one has that oh my god yeah what if we do this you know or what if this is the twist or what if this is the just isn't in it they're like we'll do this oh and then we need to add something in here because we're missing a story beat so what should it be it's a very clinical Mm. like you know games follow this thing and like oh we'll get the graphics here oh yes hi this is the graphics team we will make graphics for your game you know no one's like oh my god i love this character i'm gonna i'm gonna give it like freckles all over her nose because no one no one does that they just make stuff that's what it feels like the passion's gone so Anyway, there we go. Um, all right, so let's kick over to our comments. Yeah, uh, I want to start off with one thing just here. Sean wrote in a comment, and he actually gave us a link here. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I will say, if you want to watch it now and have a look at it, I don't want us to talk about it too much because I want this to be a community discussion. This is a, a fairly long trailer here. It's eight minutes, yeah. and it's something that I didn't know about until Sean gave it to this me. This is the first time I'm seeing it. Crimson Desert, it's called. It's a gameplay. It's apparently coming out as well for the PS4, God PS5. Damn it, looks good. That's the thing. It looks phenomenal graphically. And if you listen to it, which you're gonna, ha- which I'm gonna make you do obviously after this, yeah, and everyone's course. gonna watch it as well. Link in the description. It sounds like the next big RPG. The lines, the character uh, relationships that they seem to portray, at least in this trailer, is phenomenal. Mm. And also there's a massive fantasy element in it as well there's all these like different types of races of of, like beings and stuff like that there's a a teleportation like sort of stones that you can go through it looks amazing genuinely this could be the next game after the witcher like everyone was like oh god the witcher was great this could be the next thing i want everyone to watch this video in the description sean i know you've been looking forward for us to talk about this game but i feel like it'd be better if we make it a community discussion and we make this the discussion for the next topic that we talk about on the next two gamer we can talk about because because that's what i'm thinking i feel like let me when did when was this posted this was posted uh in come on wake up youtube january so we're already like almost a month and a half past yeah. it we had no idea no idea so um we can I, wait another week yeah yeah i feel like we should, we should watch it really think wow this looks like a chance it's i'm like telling you this looks amazing i watched it just because he was just like hey Eddie, yeah. have you seen this game and i watched it and i was like what this looks incredible so i want everyone yeah, to I'm watch gonna, this i'm gonna stop that i'm gonna watch that when i get home with please the sound do. and I'll be I'll next be week. We'll talk about this. There'll be the topic of discussion. You guys could yeah. all write in with everything that you feel about it, and we'll make a big old thing about it because gonna, no, I'm sure people don't know about. We're this gonna thing. at everyone in this channel, yeah, so you can see it. So you'll get the thing. You don't have to go scrolling through it. We'll do that maybe after this podcast. But mm. that from the I skipped through it. Combat looks good. It looks great. It looks really good. Yeah. Never heard of it though. I never heard and, of it. And well. look, if it's got a crap story, it's not going to be good. But it looks great. Trust me. From what I've seen from this trailer. And listen to the dialogue and stuff yeah. like that. It seems genuine. It seems very Sick. nice. Anyway, we'll talk about that on the next yeah. podcast. Thank you, Sean, for the, bringing that to our attention. And um, we're going to talk about people's most anticipated okay. games for 2021. Slide. I asked people to ask. So go on, read uh, the. Diogo oh, says his most anticipated games of 2021. Kenna Bridge of Spirits. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Really excited to see what that's about. Yeah. Horizon Forbidden West because I love the world. Ratchet and Clank because I want to see the game that really pushes the PS5 to its limits. I mean, I'm not excited for um, Horizon, yeah, because of Aloy. But I do love the world. The world is great, yeah. And I'm excited for Ratchet and Clank for that exact same reason. I want to see the first game that's designed just only to run on the PlayStation Five, and in particular those portals, because the whole point of that game. Um, I said this as the console war was heating up. Like, PlayStation has this brand new SSD mm. that runs on the like the multi-lane highway versus the one yeah. lane, and if anything's gonna do it this seems poised to really show what it can do and what this because as of right now it's got this whole new architecture but we haven't really had anything new and that performs in a new way to play on it we just it's just been a more powerful playstation yeah um so yeah totally agreed 
Uh, let's read Jack's comment here. He says, My most anticipated games are easily Horizon Forbidden West by a long way, and the next is a short is a sort of pick of the rest and uh and right now it's probably hogwarts legacy which i think actually got delayed indefinitely so we yeah. it can't be 2021 um as there's not too much uh known yet so let so it's lets my brain so it, it lets my brain go wild yeah. sorry about that reading's hard yeah reading is hard uh also he goes oh he so just realized that he goes edit i have now learned that hogwarts uh, legacy is delayed so it's now between kenna and ratchet and clank and kenna just looks really nice because uh, Rat- and ratchet and clank because it's a classic so there we go yeah like i said ratchet and clank they don't make bad ones yeah right they, they, there's no such thing as a bad ratchet and clank it's just that eh, this one isn't for me right now there's okay, one no i think there's one it was either on the ps plus collection it's on the psn for free yeah and that was the game of the movie of the game <laughs> and, and i think they even reference it once in, <laughs> at the very beginning because they made a ratchet and clank movie yeah um about ratchet and clank like f- coming to meet each other and all this stuff and so then that's a movie of the game and then they made the game of the movie of the game i think i might have heard this you say this before and i think i made this same joke before i'm like they need to make a game of the sonic the hedgehog movie which was based on a game yeah they need to do that exactly (laughs) um yeah i I would actually recommend anyone that hasn't played it if it is still on the psn uh, for free um it's worth playing and your chick would love it it's like um it's got that fun it's available right. on PS Plus collection, which is for PS5 owners only. Yeah. Um, but the it's actually going to be PlayStation have done this thing called Play at Home, which last year they did the same thing because of the pandemic, where they gave out the Uncharted collection for free. Right. They're giving away Ratchet and Clank for free, so everyone's going to get a chance yeah. to play this game. So go I ahead. Would, if you haven't played one, I would recommend playing. It's good fun. You can just it's basically, which is good fun. Like it's not serious. It's got um, it's just a chill vibe, man. Yeah. It's, just, it's just good fun. It's silly. Um, they're always making jokes. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's good fun. Um, where are we now? Uh, Summer Dylan's one, second half of the well, second paragraph and beyond. Uh, when I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, I thought it was a bit meh, and <clears throat> and with some, I thought it was a bit meh with some very cool mechanics and story moments. But I one hundred one hundred percent do believe that the sequel will be freaking amazing right. because of the change they have to because of the ch- because of the chance they have to improve yeah. on every aspect of the first game. And have the same I, mindset, of course. So, yeah, like sorry, reading is hard. I like the idea that maybe they'll learn from the first, whatever the first is, things are uh, full. What's the word I'm looking for? Where you fall. Fall forward. No, no, no. I'm thinking like shortcomings. That's what shortcomings. I mean. The, the shortcomings oh, the of short the first. Uh, yeah, it's short short falls, falls, yeah. Of the first game, they'll improve upon and then yeah. bring it all Like up having no that. story. Uh, well, and no characters. It had story. The character was the only issue yeah, I found. It did it. have story. The story yeah. was okay. Yeah. And then um, the second part of it. As to why Far Cry 6 is my second most... I forgot about Far Cry 6. I'm hyped for it, but I forgot about All it. All we saw was that John Despacito guy. Giancarlo Despacito. That guy. No. Espacito. Espacito. <laughs> Despacito is the song, right? Yeah. Because it had that guy and everyone was really excited, but we didn't know much He's more about it. He's incredible. He is incredible. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Um, as to why Far Cry 6 is my second most hyped game... It's because of that amazing trailer we had at the Ubisoft event. It was the only good thing at the Ubisoft. Basically, Ubisoft is the reason why you're buying this game. Exactly. We hear you loud and clear with Summer Dylan. We hear uh, you loud and clear. He says, I loved Far Cry 4 and hated 5, but 6's tone really hooked me in, as well as Giancarlo being the main villain of the game. Cannot wait to the game. Well, we don't know. We assume he's the main villain of the game. Yeah. But if that kid is supposed to be, is it Van or, or something Voss. like that? Voss. Voss. Yeah. Um, if it is him then maybe he could end up being the main villain. It's his start on the villainy part. expectations. Yeah, who knows? But Giancarlo is cr- incredible. I really vibe with him. He's got that villainous mm-hmm. face. It's like the calm, but at any moment I could order my men to take, take you out. Yeah, just have you taken away and shot. Exactly. Um, he's also, and I mentioned this before, I, I, there's a few trashy TV shows that are like not good, but I love them because they're not good. Yeah. Um, and he's in one called Revolution. Which I think you would really like, by the way. You did pitch it to me, and I was like, this sounds like it could be quite good. It's really good, but the acting's not great. (laughs) It's it's so good. It's so good. Um, Yeah, some crappy TV as well. Uh, Terra Nova, which is... I've heard of that. I've told you about it before. It's basically like uh, humanity's, the world's, you know, common thing. We've used up the world, and they figure out time travel. Right. And then they go... It's back to Earth, but it's in the dinosaur era. Right. So like T-Rex and stuff around. And to get away from the well what if you go and kill a butterfly that becomes everything they send back a uh, a butterfly 
they send back a <laughs> uh, like a homing beacon, like a nuclear thing at a location so they know exactly where it was right. and they don't find it here, which means it's different Earth, alternate timeline. Ah. So you can go back and kill all the dinosaurs and munch them and it's not going to affect... Your Earth, yeah. yeah. So that, that gets around that, right? So then it's basically human beings get sent back Kind of like, you know, an avatar where they've set up the base. They've got to set up the base and, and redo humanity. Right. Uh, but things go poorly. And it's one of those crappy Shit, days. I want to watch that. It's that good. Sounds it's good. so good. It's so oh. good. But it's it's not good. But it's so good. <laughs> and the worst thing is it goes one season. At the very end, you get this real big, like, oh, my God, what does this mean moment? Where, like, you find out about all these equations. But what are they for? And then you find this weird zone where stuff isn't normal. Like, the laws of physics don't apply here. Right. But then you never get the answers because they didn't make a season two. Oh no! But it's it's one of those ones where you want to know so badly that I have considered finding the writers on on IMDb, finding their Twitters, and asking like, I need to know what your plan was. Like, I need See, to know your outline for the story. In fact, I might do that. I did that for for Krypton, the the TV show that came out yeah. recently and whatnot. There was season one, season two, and on such a big cliffhanger, and I was like, what was the plan for the next season? Yeah. And I started like stalking the the, the actors' Twitter, yeah, yeah. Twitter pages and whatnot. And somebody, man, I think one of them, I think it was Wallace Day or something. Like that, she came out and she started talking about what the plans were for season three. And I'm like, oh my god, you was gonna be Superman's grandmother? Oh. Geez. Jesus, yeah. this is great. <laughs> yeah, sick. I actually, the problem is that show was made like ten or fifteen years ago, yeah. and I, I desperately want to know. And I'm sure these guys remember and they have all their notes. Yeah. But I, may, I might actually have to go and find them. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yes, uh, D writes in and he says, as for my most two most anticipated games, uh, Horizon Forbidden West. I've still yet to play the first one. Why? Well, oh, I guess he just really likes the look of it, okay. like we do. Um, uh, but the first uh, looks so fun and interesting and I'm so hyped. Cool. Oh my God. And he comes out with the correct answer. The banger. The Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Why do we think of that? The, po- they were also, the problem is because we focus on like the major titles, right? And also this got delayed a couple of times. It, did, it got yeah. delayed a few times so we're not even sure if it's yeah. coming out this year. And then when we think about games, we're instantly drawn to God of War. It's the only thing we really care about. He goes, because I've played the Lego Star Wars games for as long as I can remember and I'm a huge fan of what they're going to do with the open world and levels, the game is also going to have grunts options so so during the cutscene, so no voice acting, uh, which is classic Lego. That's very cool right there. That actually, I love that they just lean into being Lego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway. Yeah, that's uh, that's really cool right there. I like those two picks there. Uh, Gamerlad says his most anticipated game or games are... I'd have to say Horizon Forbidden West and Kenner Bridge of Spirits. Could have been Hogwarts if it wasn't delayed. As yeah. for God of War Ragnarok... Oh, I read that last part out there. Oh, yeah, it's not coming, weird, so yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, da, 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 Juicy Spice Sauce says most uh, anticipated games are Far Cry 6 because I loved Far Cry 5. Very different yeah, to things coming right there. I thought 5 was very hit and miss. Like peop- I think four is it three or four with Voss that guy three was with Voss four was with that uh, something ping uh, the I'm not sure but I, I believe like Himalaya somewhere. three and four are like universally loved in general yeah and I thought five was very hit and miss so it's interesting that you got both a, a love and a hate yeah. yeah we've got an accurate representation there um, as well as all the Far Cry games I played two three four and five and so I don't know what ND, ND is. No. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Juan Carlo Despacito. Juan Carlo Espacito, Despacito. Despacito. You got the name wrong there. Uh, as the villain looks promising. Also, the very... The stuff they might do with his son looks like it could be a very interesting story. We don't very know that's his son. It's true. We don't know. We don't know. And Deathloop because it looks like Dishonored and that's enough for me. I was really interested in Deathloop before we saw more about it when we thought it was strange when right? they showed the uh, the chick it might have been because she had an afro did she, I was like, she, had kinda, <laughs> she was kind of afro as well I now think I think about did. it oh god we're just seeing all these these little I threads know, once coming you, out once you know you have a thing you start realising oh, maybe that's why I was interested hey, but my, my teacher back in back in school math was teacher that, when we, she had a huge afro yeah we're, and a huge <laughs> personality when, <laughs> when um, we first saw that it was like you're in a time loop. One wants to maintain it. The yeah. other wants to get out of it, right? You're like, oh, cool. That could be really sick. And then we saw in it, it looked more like a Fortnite-y, G3 yeah. thing. So I'm, I, I was know. interested when I thought it was like either a 1v1 or just a story-driven thing where yeah. you have to pick one side of the story and play through it. Um, 
we'll see. I hope it's good. Yeah. Uh, he also edit, says, uh, edit, I forgot about uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I'd replace Deathloop with that, actually. Fair enough. And he goes, also, Dying Light 2 will be there, but there's no release date uh, anymore. So I'd be pleasantly surprised if it launches this year. Yeah, they they uh, indefinitely um, delayed their one. Yeah, I'm also still exci- super excited for Avowed because it's Obsidian. It's f- fantasy RPG. Yep, yep, yep. yep I'm interested yep. in that. Uh... Ben the Nun Fricker says, There's only one thing I'm looking forward to this year Assassin's Creed, Ainsley, Ainsley, Ainsley. <laughs> I believe the next one is going to be developed by Quebec. Can't wait for the epic raids and numbers of flying oh, on the screen. Yeah, you need the, that's all the that's the quintessential Assassin's Creed stuff right there. Do you know what actually? I love the Nun Fricker Ben because all he does is post stuff so he can get the Ainsley emote in there. Yeah. That's all he does. But the thing is that we have, everyone else takes these things quite seriously and they put us some good things yeah. and maybe there'll be a joke in there every now and again. The Nymphrica Ben, he just comes out full balls to the wall and he's yeah, like, just, it's all meme. There we go, guys. Yeah. And I, it's a good change of pace. It's, it's great. He's got the, he's got it down perfectly there. Uh, Ryan? Yes. He actually did say it's yeah, pronounced it Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. My I most can't un- say that though. Are we, are we, are we, are we, yeah, <laughs> uh, My most anticipated game is Horizon. I finished Zero Dawn last week and was, and it was amazing. I loved it. I'm looking forward to where Ayla will travel, and what's going to happen with. Uh, yeah, we've already mentioned Hades with Hades yeah, uh, yeah. since uh, Science has it. Um, yeah, that's about the most interesting thing we have teed up for the story mm. as far as i can see um i also love the look of the different armors what do you guys want to see in horizon forbidden west um some character in aloy because <laughs> in case we haven't mentioned it that's the one thing <laughs> i mean look straight up i know a lot of you guys have have loved it and that makes me really happy mm. i genuinely mean it i could not get over aloy having no character as far as i could see and the kind of weird man haiti vibe in it, mm. it which once you see it i at least once i saw it i found it really hard to not to look past i get that um so if they would just make her compelling and give her some growth i think uh, keep frick if you really want to keep the man hating vibe i don't care that much if we have a compelling character yeah. but we didn't um i'm glad you guys loved it i'm glad you guys <clears> loved <throat> aloy and, and all that stuff i felt like she was a bit of a wet rag never cared about anything in a world perfectly poised to be so wondrous yeah but I love the aesthetic. The world's so good looking. I love what they did with it. And that's why, one of the reasons I'm so salty about the game, because there was so much right, mm. and they just missed it by a couple of marks, you know? Yeah. Uh, I need to jump back to Patreon, because I forgot there was one question, so one right uh, comment that Joe Cormack wrote in here. Yeah, yeah. It was just about the most anticipated games, obviously. By the way, about brand new Patreon before. as of like two days ago. Exactly. It was like the last streamcast, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Tuesday. Turns out we do do other great things, and it does bring people here. And it goes, two most anticipated games, Deathloop and Skyward Sword, which is the one that got a little oh, yeah. bit of a little bit of uh, controversy and whatnot. Yeah. But he goes, because I've never played it, and it also, uh, it's the only 3D Zelda I haven't played. Uh, he's a big, big Zelda fan, so yeah, yeah. if it's the only one you haven't played... All power yeah, exactly. to you right Fair there. Enough. you got to get in there. And also, you guys, I genuinely have no ideas about God of War 2 because I'm not creative enough to think of ideas. <laughs> Don't I mean, worry. Uh, Tyler was the same way when it came to Streamcast. Just hanging out around us will just bring all these ideas yeah, yeah, yeah. in your head. So the thing we'll is, what like, I think what people don't get is that you don't have to have, like, an idea. Like, I think this and present it. Yeah. Like, as someone says something, I'll, and you get, oh, wouldn't it be cool if, like... And pitch it Chuck in. it in, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, what wouldn't it be like? A lot of people say, "Wouldn't it be cool if Atreus is the main character?" I think that will happen. You know, just we're, because I think you're a freaking idiot. <laughs> we're small enough as well that we can like. If you have an idea at the time when you're listening to the podcast, throw it in the comment section. We'll right. read it there and whatnot. We can have some discussion or hop onto the Discord server and at us and be like, "Hey, like, by the way, I was thinking about this actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if Atreus had this huge dong?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, he does. Story. It comes out of his mouth. It's so true. Long. That's a good point. Yeah, it's fully inverted. <laughs> Um, interestingly though Hood says my most most impi- blah, 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 record, scratch. Ooh, record scratch my most anticipated game of this year is Anthem Next whoa okay well this is gonna go good for you so awesome that they're going to give it another try so awesome what an amazing game it was to begin with and I'm sure they'll work on it even more for its millions of fans and make it the game of the generation <laughs> eyes emoji 
<laughs> and then right afterwards, Gabby fan account writes that's, that's in, sorry, freaking, Hood. I, I guarantee that's, yeah, it's Super Daniel. Yeah, yeah Super Daniel's like, sorry, Hood, but EA is cancelling Anthem, and he posts the actual, the uh, the, the yeah. apology right there from Christian Daly. Do you know what's um, funny? That's yeah, the that's... first time anyone's actually used that emote, the uh, the Destiny facepalm. Yeah, yeah, it is actually. And uh, it's like, definitely didn't know about that before writing that comment. Um, yeah. I think I that's think, everything, man. I think that is everything. Let's wrap the show. Guys, thank you so much for writing into the show and making it as awesome as it was right there. It was a lot of good conversation. I'm glad that this show turned out the way it did. It went really well, I feel like. Um, we'll catch you guys on Sunday tomorrow if yes. you're watching this live when it comes out on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Um, if you're watching this on Patreon. Or in two, two days, days because you're not a uh, freeloading peasant. Yeah, yeah. If you're not a freeloader... <laughs> Like uh, like D is one of our. He's our modern. He's a modern freeloader. But uh, (laughs) if you're watching this on YouTube on Saturday tomorrow for the uh, all day stream that we're going to be doing, it's going to be super fun. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here today, guys. Go catch us out on podcast services and wherever you guys are. Oh, if you're on podcast services, good thing we mentioned this early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Please rate us five stars or something. It helps a lot. Exactly, it does actually. If if everyone could actually take a time, like five minutes out of their day, head over to Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars, leave a nice little review that'd be cool even if it's a funny review even if it's yeah. like these frickers over here because that's one of the things is that although we're predominantly a YouTube channel and YouTube show yeah. uh, we have got people in from podcast services exactly because when they're not like I don't know, driving to work or something they want to watch YouTube riding that ambulance and right exactly the bus with the, the nuns. and it helps us grow the audience in mm-hmm. from different directions so the exactly. five star ratings actually do help a lot yeah yeah. alright bro that was an epic episode pretty good I think it was pretty awesome uh, I'll catch you in a few hours for the uh, the show yeah. state of play and, and also right now for the next uh, podcast the conversations podcast for a little yeah. dollar a month I'm sorry yeah, I'm, yeah, a, they're never going to listen to this point but there no. goes. <laughs> anyway We'll catch you guys all in the next Ooh. one and I'll catch you in a moment. Why did you do that? Also, I figured out outros. Oh, go on. Uh, I think for Streamcast, we should do that. That's a wrap. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. And then okay. maybe for this one, logging off, innit? Because we're because you log off when you game in. Yeah. Two games it's logging off. Out. Rest mode. Yeah. Hey, guys, Siri, turn off my PlayStation. Help, don't you. Don't sit. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> She was listening. She was listening. Xbox, turn off (laughs) me. Xbox, off. Uh, Guys, if you want to help us out with an outro, fucking write write something in Discord. Anyway, see you later. (laughs)